Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed Live from Los Angeles. I'm Alex Curry here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. How are we doing this Good morning, morning Alex. How you doing this morning? Hey, Skip. Man, this 2020 just will not leave us be. There's never anything like 2020. Nothing. Hopefully. Another day, another incredible story. Hopefully there'll never be anything else like 2020. I am with you. Boom. And with that being said, we are getting today started with Eagles wide receiver Deshaun Jackson. The three-time Pro Bowler is facing criticism after sharing an anti-Semitic quote that was attributed to Adolf Hitler. Jackson also shared admiration for Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. Now, Jackson has since said people took his post the wrong way and has no hatred in his heart towards anyone. The Eagles released a statement that in part said the posts were, quote, offensive, harmful, and absolutely appalling. Mm. So Shannon, what do you make of this? Um, Skip, I had a conversation with D-Jack last night. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I... He, uh, I put a message out to him. He returned my call, and I said, "Bruh, I need to know what you were thinking." He said, uh, "It didn't come out the way I wanted it to." I said, "Well, what were your point you're trying to make?" He said, "The point I was trying to make, Sharp, was that if blacks were to put their money together, if we did black biz uh, uh, banks and black businesses, we have more power than we realize." And he said, "If you look at the movement right now, it's showing that when we come together, we are a major force." I said, DJ, how did you expect somebody to understand that from what you posted? Mm -hmm. I said, <clears throat> it was taken out of context. I said, DJ, it wasn't taken out of context. You didn't provide context. I said, you can't expect the reader to provide context with something that you're retweeting. I said, you retweet that, you're co-signing it. Yeah. I said, moving forward, the number one thing, if you quote Adolf Hitler, is wrong. So anything else that comes after that, nobody hears it because you just said Hitler and you're trying to portray him in a positive light. Mm. I said, you have to provide context. I said, you watch Skip and I regularly. I know how I know Skip because I talked to him when the Super Bowl was in Atlanta, he and I had a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I said, Skip and I, we always, we joke a lot, but we try to provide context. I said, we're talking about the Confederate and Confederate monuments. Mm -hmm. I said, in the context that I use, I said, you don't see them putting up statues in Germany of Hitler. Now, I have to provide context because I'm talking about the Confederate monuments in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I said, if I just said they're not putting up statues in Germany of Hitler, someone's going to say, well, Shannon said they should have statues of Germany, uh, uh, of Hitler up in Germany. Mm -hmm. But I'm providing context saying you don't because of what happened. Yep. So that's what I'm doing. I said, D. Jack, I said, bro, you don't understand. I said, the, first of all, there's another problem that you have. I said, on Twitter, you only have 280 characters. I said, what you're trying to point out is more than 280 characters. That's something you're going to have to verbalize. You can't write it. Because mm -hmm. there are a lot of times, uh, uh, D-Jack, I want to say things, mm -hmm. but it's way more than 280 characters. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be taken like, the way you're meaning it and the way somebody else reads it is two different things. I say, but you provided no context. And he thought about it. He said, you're right. He said, I didn't. He said, but what I thought, I say, D-Jack, in 2020, we're, very, we're hypersensitive. I said, you got to have context to what you're trying to, to trying to say. I said, now, you put this out there. I said, people are upset, and rightfully so. I said, you have been, and, and he said, Sharp, I ain't got no heart in my, uh, my uh, no hate in my heart for anybody. Jewish people, white people, and no, nobody. I said, but you have to understand. I said, you're very prominent on social media. Your, 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 your Black Lives Matter and your preaching uh, uh, um, and your, your protesting. I said, you have to understand, DJ, there are a lot of people that are skeptical of the movement, and they will do anything they possibly can to discredit you. Don't you discredit yourself by tweeting this. If we're all in this one love, we love everybody, we want everybody to be treated equal, you have to be mindful of what you're disseminating on your social media. You have to be careful of what you're saying. I said, that's it. I said, you need to provide context. But even with context, let Hitler... Let him be. Mm -hmm. There's nothing good can come of that. And that just goes to show, and, and I think this is a learning lesson from him. Skip, I really do believe he was trying to say, blacks, we have a, we're powerful. Even Killer Mike says, we have one trillion in spending capital. If we were to spend in our communities, they would listen more. 
But because our do dollar is spent so many different places, they don't value our voices. They don't value our ideas. Kind of like what he, I don't even know, I don't even think the, the, the quote was really attributed to Hitler. Somehow it got tagged to him. But Skip, and, and, I, and I, he, without seeing him, I believe because uh, uh, Skip, his owner, Mr. Lurie, mm -hmm. is Jewish. Mm -hmm. Howie Roseman, the general manager, is Jewish. Yep. And he's like, Sharp, Howie brought me back. Mr. Lurie brought me back. I got no hatred towards them. What I said, I didn't, pre as you mentioned, I didn't provide comp uh, uh, proper context and I didn't properly express what I was trying to say. And, I, and he said, I'm sorry for that. He said, I apologize. And if I need to apologize again, I will. He said, but I was wrong for, tweet, for, for, for disseminating that without providing, as you used the term, context. Mm -hmm. And so, Skip, that's what, and that's, that's how we left it. I said, bro, just be careful. Just be mindful. When you retweet something, you co-signed it. Mm. You saying, I agree with what's being said in this statement without providing context. I say, context is everything. That's why President Trump caught so much flack for retweeting what they said with that white power, because basically you co-signed it. Correct. You got to provide context, mm -hmm. it's, 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 especially in a time like this, because people, they're canceling people. And we know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so, DJ, be careful. Okay. I appreciate you reached out. Mm -hmm. I appreciate he reached back. Yep. I've spent some time around Deshaun Jackson. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of good conversations with Deshaun Jackson over the years. Yep. So I feel like I have some feel for him, maybe not the feel that you have for him. I believe he was contrite in his apologies, yes. which, which went on all day long yesterday. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So I look back at the, the Deshaun Jackson I've known, and he's been around. He's a sharp young man. Mm -hmm. He's now 33 years of age. Right. He's entering his 13th season in National Football League. So, so he's not first year, second year, even third year. No. He's 13th year. He's out of Long Beach Poly, not too far from where we sit. Correct. He matriculated at a school called the University of California at Berkeley. Yep. It is one of the most distinguished institutions of higher learning that you can find in this land. Yes. And I have always appreciated that about Deshaun. Mm -hmm. So given all that, it's hard for me to give him the naive pass on this. And we haven't gotten to Louis Farrakhan yet, but, but I'm about to. Okay. So... Given that he posted about Farrakhan on Saturday and Monday, mm -hmm. and then this came, the triple impact of that, the triple anti-Semitic impact of all three posts, leave me no other option but to say that I believe that Deshaun, as, as much as I do like him and believe in him, I believe he needs to be suspended for one game, just one game to send a message to the rest of the National Football League that under no circumstance, no matter how much you apologize, will this be tolerated. Shannon, these players are lectured constantly on the dangers of social media. Mm -hmm. Back to my days at ESPN, Coach Herman Edwards, don't hit sin, just don't <laughs> hit sin. Right. It, it's so dangerous that they are told it can get you suspended mm -hmm. or it can get you fired. Right, absolutely. We know this. You know it and I know it, and I appreciate what you brought up. I know where I have gotten to, to a point over the last month or so. Any topic involving race, racism, especially on Twitter, in what is it, 280, 280 characters? 280 characters. It used to be 140. 40, correct. That was really bad. Exactly. Now it's 280. Even 280, you cannot do it justice. You can't. You, you, you cannot express yourself to the depth and the degree of context that you need to when you're dealing with those kind right. of issues. Right. 
They defy Twitter. They, they, you, you can't do it on Twitter. So I find myself night after night saying, no, just don't just leave. Because I know I'm going to get to talk to you every morning. Yep. We're going to do it for two and a half hours. Right. And we have room to roam right. here. We have time, depth. We, we have the, the breadth here at this desk right. that, that we can really get right. to the bottom of mm -hmm. these topics. Right. So let's quickly hit on the Farrakhan topic. No matter what you think of Louis Farrakhan, Nation of Islam, he has made it pretty clear over the years he does not like Jewish people. Is, is that fair to say? Well, not from the conversation that I've had with, 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 with the minister. He said it's, it's abundantly. He's made it clear to anybody that's sitting down, sat down with him. He says he doesn't. So Okay, I got that, and I've read that. Um, but the Anti-Defamation League has identified him as anti-Semitic. Okay. And last night, just to refresh my, my memory on this, I went back and read a lot of his quotes. They read hateful against Jewish people. And I know at first, as Obama was running for president, he supported Obama. Obama did not love it right. and, and sort of <clears throat> right. arms linked and right. kept a distance from right. him. And then once Obama got elected, one of his early decisions... Louis Farrakhan <clears throat> criticized him as the first Jewish president. Mm -hmm. And then <clears throat> the minister <sighs> supported Donald Trump in 2016, saying he was the only candidate who has stood up uh, it, to, the, uh, to the Jewish community and said, I don't want your money. So, so what would that be cons considered as? I mean, you remember when uh, 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 Rep House Representative Omar, when right. she said it was all about the Benjamins, they jumped all over her. President right. Trump said the exact same thing. You guys won't vote for me right. because you care about your money and you can't control me. Okay. He said the exact same thing. Nobody said a word. Okay. I'm not going to read the more volatile quotes from the minister, yes. from Louis Farrakhan, mm -hmm. about Jewish people, but... Let's just leave it at this. The Anti-Defamation League okay. identified him as anti-Semitic. Okay. So if Deshaun expresses admiration for Louis Farrakhan on Saturday and Monday, does that not set up a, then a quote attributed to Hitler? I don't even right. know if it's from Hitler or right. not, but that's what we have we right. all leaped to that conclusion. Right. But I've heard people say that, that that quote is not from Hitler. Okay, it might not be, but somehow it's been You're connected to. to. Correct. And so, to, to your point, and and I think Deshaun knows this. I I just can't believe he wouldn't have some feel for this. Once you go Hitler, anything that comes after that, it, it, nobody it, wants to hear. You are you are talking about the ultimate, most infamous, devil incarnate, anti-Semitic who ever walked this earth. No question. So. Once you go there, and and if the whether or not the quote is from him, I hate to, I was going to read it. Now I look at it. I can't even read it. It's so bad. But it's just spewing hate. Right. But I get where Deshaun was going because at the end of the quote, it's actually to use Deshaun's word. It's uplifting to right. black people. Right. He uses the old school word for mm -hmm. black people. All right. But it, it's basically saying that this plan, the Jewish people's plan in America, won't work if the black people know who they are mm -hmm. and sort of stand up to right. them. So he's saying, I'm going to up, th this is true. Okay, so I get that part right. of it. But to your point, the, <laughs> no. the, the first three-fourths of the quote, right. are, are, it's spewing hate toward Jewish people attributed to Adolf Hitler. Correct. Okay. Whew. Okay, Deshaun, you just can't go there. And and as you point out, the the sort of the terrible irony of this is, wait, your, your owner and your GM are Jewish. And they, they termed this post as appalling. Mm -hmm. And they went on to say that we are continuing to evaluate the circumstances and will take appropriate action. Right. I, I'm assuming they are considering whether or not to suspend him. Right. Okay, this leads us all the way back to what year was it? 2013. 2013. Riley Cooper, mm -hmm. so allow me to say before you launch on this, mm -hmm. the day after Riley Cooper happened, I was on the other show on ESPN, and I just lost it. And I said, this man has to go. Mm -hmm. He has to be cut immediately.
because you cannot, no matter what state you're in, and as you always say, if you are inebriated, excuse me, inebriated, you're even more uh, likely mm-hmm. to utter your true feelings. Drunk kids, angry people. Okay, there you go. And he was two of those three <laughs> at that point, right? Yeah. And he used the N word, and I'm not talking about the one that ends in A. I'm talking about the most evil word in the English language, one that I've always said I wish we could eradicate it and make it illegal to use, Mm -hmm. the N-word ending in the hard E-R, and he made it plural because he was mad at ushers or security The security wouldn't let him go backstage. I think it was a Kenny Chesney concert. It was a a country country western in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I just said, that's enough. He must go. There's no way the black players on that that team can live with him the rest Mm -hmm. of this football season. And to my shock, I was stunned, I was dumbfounded that Michael Vick, whom we have on our mm-hmm. show regularly, stood up a day later for Riley Cooper and I think saved his job. Mm-hmm. But not only did he save his job under the Chip Kelly regime, mm-hmm. they sent him home for the weekend. I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was the quote unquote suspension of it to, to sort of cool out, whatever. But once Michael said, you know, I've always thought he was a good dude, that was it. Chip Kelly said he will be an Eagle, and very shortly thereafter, they gave him a new contract. They did. Wasn't it like five it, years, 25 years? They million? gave, uh, and this happened, um, I think, July, August. Mm-hmm. I think it happened June or July of 2013. July. And he got an extension, I think, February, March of okay. 2014. All right. Boom. There we go. Mm-hmm. That was so wrong. And yet, you can flip then into 2020 and say, well, wait a second. If they let Riley Cooper get away with that, shouldn't they be okay with Deshaun? No, they shouldn't be okay Okay. with it. Let's not be okay Okay. with it. I'm with you. For me, the two wrongs don't make the classic right. Correct. So I still say that no matter how contrite Deshaun is, that he he has to be suspended one game just because this is this is the message that has to get sent, especially in the time we're in right right now. Any sort of hate like this displayed on social media cannot be tolerated. And I feel for Deshaun, and maybe he was naive, but I think in year 13, out of Cal Berkeley, you you can't get that kind of a pass. Right. I just think the thing is, is like you mentioned, it's it's almost like a throwaway, Skip. That's the last thing after you, four or five pages, when you could have got to made your point earlier, just put that in there. Blacks, we have so much more power than we realize. If we were to come together, right. if we were Beautiful. to fit, yes, oh, if we, go for our it. banks and our businesses, no matter the no, no matter what that business is, we have a voice. We're, you can see that right now that we have a lot of power. We 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 didn't realize how much power we have mm-hmm. until the George Floyd situation, because now it's kind of galvanized America, and this thing spread. Not just America; it went all across the world. Mm-hmm. All fifty states had protests all across the world. They were protesting, Absolutely. and so Skip, for me, I do believe DJ, and like I, like you said, and like I said, Skip, some things are bigger than Twitter, and you can't explain yourself. Skip, they say a lot of times things get lost in translation or you're writing something down. Well, that's not what I meant. Yeah. Well, and 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 I got to Well, Shannon, you're not going to say anything about this. You're always tweeting about right. People got upset with me because I hadn't responded yet because they wanted me to respond when they wanted to. They wanted me to exp- talk about it when they wanted me to. No, I'm going to do it on my timeline. And if I'm going to talk about something that's going to go in depth, I'm going to do it on our show, not on Twitter. Totally agree. Because I will be end up 55. <laughs> see it. One, two, 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 three. No, 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 no. I can explain myself you could better. You write a book about this. Exactly. Yes. But Skip, we're going to have to be careful because we ask black people to disavow a lot of people. You remember when President Obama was running for office? He had to disavow Reverend Wright. He has to yes. disavow. Whites never have to disavow. No, I agree. And they stand I, I... in lockstep and barrel. Jerry Jones, Mr. Kraft, stand lockstep and barrel with Donald Trump, and nobody has asked them to disavow them. But when it comes to black people, mm-hmm. and we know what President Trump has said. I agree. We know what he's done, mm-hmm. but nobody's asked. He stands up there, good people on both sides. But the moment they black, now, Skip, where's our guy? Because you know in situations when whites say something bad in the NFL, they get Tony Jungie. Mr. Tony, he'll clean up everything. Where's our guy? Where's the person that we have if a black slips mm-hmm. up that's in the Jewish community mm-hmm. that can come to our defense? Mm. Like they send Tony Dungy out there to go to everybody else's defense. Mm. I'm not excusing. 
as I told DJ, he DA. He was dead ass wrong for what yeah. he said. Okay. And what he no, what not what he said, what he tweeted. Because it's basically like he's saying, because if you retweet something from your uh from yours, it's you saying it. You're co-signing yep. it. I said, come on, DJ. You gotta be better, you gotta be smarter than this. I said, because there's a lot of people that don't believe in the movement, that are trying to sabotage the movement. Don't you sabotage it from within. Mm. That's a great point. And by the way, just to to sum this up, after the Anti-Defamation League of Philadelphia was very upset, obviously, at first with Deshaun, and they were upset over the Farrakhan quotes because they said that, that the minister has, quote, disturbing history of hate and anti-Semitism. But later, after Deshaun did apologize, then the, the ADL of Philadelphia came back and said that they appreciated his apology. Right. And it's our hope. That, that you use this moment as a chance to work with the Jewish community and educate yourself further on how dangerous, hurtful anti-Semitism is. Right. Okay. Great. W will Deshaun work with them? He, he, yeah. he should. He, he's, he's involved in his yeah. community. I, 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 don't, I don't think he has a problem with that. He needs to understand context is very important when you're dealing with issues like this. Provide context. Okay, why am I saying this? And what does it go in context towards? And that's what DJ has. Skip, you just can't put something out there and then expect the reader to read with context. Yep. No, you have to provide context so the reader can understand, okay, he's saying this. This is why this goes together. Skip, I tweeted something about two weeks ago. It was about a black man in uh, Valdosta, Georgia. And I said, they asked him, uh, they, they said he was looking suspicious. And he says, I was up at the store at Western Union, because my sister was going to send me some money. Mm -hmm. But he came back, and so the police, uh, they approached him. He asked him what was he doing. He said, I was up there uh, at Western Union waiting for money, but it wasn't open. So I came, uh, you know, I came down here. He had his hoodie on. He, they asked him his name, provided his name. He gave ID. He was compliant. And so I provided context. He was compliant. He provided the ID. Yet here we are. Mm -hmm. Because they say, be compliant. Provide ID. He did everything that was asked, yet... A broken wrist later, he's suing the uh, uh, balance uh, 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 police. Here we are, Skip. Context. Boom, boom, boom. You laugh step by step. DJ, you just can't tweet and say, okay, reader, understand, decipher what I meant by that. Mm -hmm. No, that's not the reader's job. That's mm -hmm. your job to provide context yep. for what they're about to read. Yep. But uh, moving forward, anybody, you will be 100% okay if you don't quote Adolf Hitler. 1,000% of the time, you'll be okay because nobody wants to hear anything unless you said he was the most murderous, the most notorious dictator in the history of mankind. Unless you say something like that, nothing good. Even probably his, his relatives try to distance themselves from him moving forward. They probably changed their names because you don't want that. I ain't heard anybody named Hitler since. Mm. You, nope. you got your name up off that skin. I don't want that tag. You got it. <laughs> I'm with you. Now, we all know that people make mistakes, and yeah. we want to believe that Deshaun Jackson just made a big mistake. And what matters most is that you learn from it and you grow from it. No mercy. The WNBA's Atlanta Dream co-owner and Georgia Senator Kelly Leffler has been publicly critical of the Black Lives Matter initiative in the league. Yesterday, Leffler opposed the Black Lives Matter patches that the WNBA plans to use on jerseys. She said, quote, the truth is we need less not more politics in sports. Shannon, how will this play out? Yeah, here she is. <laughs> Skip, I thought we needed less politics in sports. What is she? Is she a basketball player? Skip, I, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. You see, this is what's confusing to me. Oh, we need to keep politics out of sports and sports out of politics. She's a senator from Georgia, my state. And here she is commenting. Miss Kelly, now, although she was not elected, she was appointed by the governor, Brian Kemp. Mm -hmm. Skip. I don't see how she remains in her role as an owner of the dream because her messaging and her brand and what she's aligned with does not seem to align with the inclusiveness of the WNBA. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm overreading it, but I don't think I'm wrong on this one, Skip. This might be the WNBA's Donald Sterling moment. Now, uh, uh, the, the WNBA Players Association tweeted, enough, out, capital, mm -hmm. everything capitalized. Mm -hmm. uh, Sue Bird um, who else tweeted? Cheryl Swoop. Mm -hmm. yep. they, Brianna Stewart. Brianna, I think that's the name. That's, that's you're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've all mm -hmm. made it abundantly clear they're not comfortable with her being in her role as a co-owner of the WNBA. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't know how this is going to play out, Skip, but it's probably going to be my guess. There's a good chance they're probably not going to play until she goes. Mm -hmm. uh, because with the inclusivity of what they try to provide with the WNBA, they accept all. Black, white, LBGTQ, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. If we want. We want to be treated the same. And that goes against what she what she's preaching. Mm -hmm. Because she had a big issue when the blacks were protesting with firearms and what when the whites protested with firearms. Because she's strong Second Amendment. And this is what I tell I was telling somebody say, you want them to change the Second Amendment? Let legal black people start getting guns and carrying them around. They'll switch it just like Ronald Reagan did in 60, what was 67, 68 when the Black Panthers started doing that in California and they changed the rules. Mm -hmm. You want to do something? If you want something changed, let black people get on board and start doing a bunch of it. Mm -hmm. And you see how fast they change the law. Mm -hmm. But Skip, I believe she's going to have to go. The, what, what, the, what she's aligned with and where the WNBA is, Skip, they don't line up. They don't line up. I don't see how she stays. Mm. So before I get to my opinion of this, let me step back for a second and say, if you tried to sell this script as just a TV <laughs> movie script in Hollywood, you'd get laughed out of the office. Yes. Because think of what we have here. Step back. What do you call Atlanta? I know Washington's always been Chocolate City, but, but Atlanta has become a black capital, right? Absolutely. Of, in, in this country. Yes. So here you have the WNBA team in Atlanta, Georgia, suddenly being co-owned by a white woman who then becomes the senator from Georgia and at the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, suddenly she makes public a letter that was intended, I thought, only for the eyes and ears of the commissioner of the league mm -hmm. in which she is scathingly against Black Lives Matter. Yes. What? Mm -hmm. It cannot happen. But it did. Mm -hmm. And just for the record, last year's Atlanta Dream, the top eight scores on that team were either black or minority. Correct. Okay, so it's not like they have three white stars, what, whatever. This, <laughs> this, is, this is Atlanta we're talking yeah. about. Okay, to your point, if you run back through her history, the irony was she actually grew up on a farm in the central part of the state of Illinois in a little town outside a little town called Stanford, Illinois. Mm -hmm. She goes to the University of Illinois, downstate, mm -hmm. Champaign. Champaign. Then upstate to DePaul for her master's in Chicago in business. Mm -hmm. And then she works her way sort of up the business chain up, up until she joins a company, a very powerful company, very successful company. And within a couple of years, she marries the CEO of that company. So now... She has money, and she buys her way into the WNBA, first as a minority owner, and then she and another woman buy out the other majority owner, and they become co-owners, I think it's been about two years yeah. ago, of this team. Right. Hmm, interesting. And then to your point, she doesn't win an election. She gets appointed by your governor of your state mm -hmm. to become the, the sort of the junior senator, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so now— Isaacson had to step down yes. because of health-related There you go. So now, she must be elected this coming November, and we know November 3rd is going to be a big day for this yeah. country, but it's going to be a big day for your state also, yes. Yes. because she, is, she now must be elected mm -hmm. into that post. Right. So, to me, as you pointed out, the, 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 the <laughs> laugh out loud moment here is that she's saying, we, we actually need less politics when this is clearly a page right out of... <laughs> President Trump's playbook. She, he's, okay. she's the parrot sitting right on his stroke, okay. uh, shoulder, All right. echoing everything that he's she's saying. obviously made it very clear she's a staunch Trump supporter. Right. So now, as a Republican, she's not really the incumbent. She's just got to keep her right. to keep her position right. in the Senate. She needs to get elected in Georgia. Right. So she's doing exactly what President Trump has mm -hmm. been doing lately with his Bubba Wallace tweet mm -hmm. and then his tweet about the pro football team in Washington and the professional baseball team in Cleveland. Right. He, he is reaching back out once again to what, whatever is left of the far right that helped vote him into office in 2016. Right. And so is she. Right. To me, you could call it perhaps desperate because from what I hear and read about your state of Georgia— for the first time since 1992, when majority in Georgia voted for Clinton, mm -hmm. it is becoming a swing state, as in 
It could go one way way or the other, right? Yes. So that could also affect her ability to win her election, Right. right? So... To me, this was nothing but a political attempt. It's a it's a campaign speech, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. Right. I'm not sure she really cares about continuing on as the co-owner right. of this team. Or there's no way it became public, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but my best guess is that she made it public. She leaked mm-hmm. her letter to the commissioner, as opposed to the commissioner leaking the letter. Right. It, it could do her a lot more good politically that it would be do good for the commissioner. Well, she came by better picking up the phone and calling the commissioner. <laughs> that yeah. way she could have yeah. denied everything oh, you, that okay. was said. Well, but now she got a paper trail. You can't deny the trail. Th- this was scathing to the point. I, I just have to bring these up, <laughs> these points up, because she's saying, I adamantly oppose Black Lives Matter. Political movement, political movement, <laughs> which has advocated for the defending of police, maybe a little bit here and there, but called for the removal of Jesus from churches and the di- disruption of the nuclear family structure. Wow. Talking about a broad brush, right? What? It, it's, it, it's hate-filled. Mm-hmm. It's, it's hate-fueled. So to me, <laughs> at least Donald Sterling, did, he, he did, remember, what he said were private remarks right. secretly taped by his girlfriend and made public. Right. Well, Kelly Leffler, what, I, I'm pretty sure she, this, yeah. this is, she wanted right. this in every headline and on every website. Well, there's no question that she's willing to down the Trump heel. Yeah. I mean, she, she's yeah. pro- everything that he yeah. is, she is. Right. And so I, you know, and, and I guess I kind of everybody, all the Republicans have lined up behind him. Okay, be it. That's your party. You support your party. I'm sure the Democrats, I don't know if they'd have lined up behind President Obama quite like this here, but that's mm-hmm. neither here nor there. Skip, it's just for me, when you look at it and you step back and you say, okay, the, the WNBA, and, and they've kind of been a, right alongside the, uh, the, uh, the NBA, Skip, with the T-shirts that I can't breathe and, yeah. and the hoodies and things of that nature. But the NBA, the WNBA with such inclusivity, yep. this is stark contrast to what they're trying to be and what they want to be. Mm. I just don't see how, how, how is this, Skip, how is this a marriage? I just don't see how this is a marriage. And when you have one of your owners, it's one thing if a player says something like this that I don't agree, yada, yada, okay, fine. But you're talking about an owner. And that's, and that's what got Donald Sterling in trouble. Skip, he's an owner in feeling this and, 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 and saying this. Mm-hmm. And so you obviously, he felt this way because he's comfortable. He's to- I'm in my home, so I'm going to speak freely, openly, and honestly. I have him at the gate. I mean, can you just not, you know, I just, I, just, I, I, I just don't see how she stays there. And like you said, she probably could care less. I mean, they're well off. I mean, that doesn't do anything for her profile. And a number of the women who had played for the team and, and had had dinner at their mansion mm-hmm. in Atlanta mm-hmm. were all shocked by, oh, I, I never heard any of this from her before, but what do you always tell me? Every once in a while, somebody will show you yeah. who they really well, are. And Skip, you remember when we talked about it, after the election, I said, what's going to happen? I said, President Trump has made it okay. He's made it cool. He's made it fashionable. Mm-hmm. Because now you can say things, well... There's no more, P- they say PC culture. There's no more PC. I can say how I feel. He's made it okay. It used to be in the shadows. People were like, nah, I ain't gonna say that. I mean, every once in a while you get the openly and blatant ones, but now everybody feels comfortable. Oh yeah, you heard what he said. The president said, I can say it too. And that's not okay. That guy should be held to the highest of standards. But this right here with her, sorry. Come on, George. I know we better than this. We need to vote up out of there. Oh. Uh, Skip, I don't know, but we got them fringe counties. I think there's 100 and, there used to be 150 counties, I think. I think it's maybe 148, 147, 449, something like that. And it's not, it's when you start getting outwards. Is that where she, because she's not winning Atlanta. She's not winning DeKalb. Probably Decatur, but it's, that's only three counties. She probably gonna win Chatham. You know, she probably win Bibb. <laughs> What's your county? Glenville. What's no, uh, Tatnall. Okay. Oh, she went to Tabo. Okay. She went to Tabo. Okay. Evans County, all of them. No mercy. Patrick Mahomes currently has the NFL World Spotlight after signing his record setting extension for nearly half a billion dollars. Meanwhile, Tom Brady is on the back end of his career looking to make a statement with perhaps the best receiving group he's ever had. And this season, According to Fox Bet, Mahomes is predicted to have 36 and a half touchdowns, while Brady's number is 29 and a half. So, Shannon, who has the better offense next season, Mahomes 
or Brady? That ain't even close. Mm. Not even close, Not even close. Says Shannon Not Clark. even close. No. One guy's in a Ferrari, the other guy's in a Tesla. One guy ain't making no noise. Not bad. Man, no, he ain't making no noise. You can't even hear no Tesla. I'm at the car. Like, is that car even on? Mm. Do I need to call uh, AAA and get you some assistance? Because I don't hear your car running. You just pulled up at the stoplight. <laughs> and oh, and oh, stop it, Skip. But you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I haven't spoken. You yet. ought to be ashamed of yourself because here's the thing. Here's a guy that's been at the helm of his offense for three years. And one guy's just coming in after four months. And so he's just going to just pick, just take off. Stop it. You know better than that. My homeboy's going to show y'all. He's like, you know what? Mm. I just got 503 mil, but I should have got a bill because I'm mm. underpaid. I, I should have got, got a bill ticket. <laughs> That's what he should have got, Skip. Because he said, like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and do this thing back to back. I'm about to throw a 50. I'm about to throw a little 50 spot. Mm. He's going to have more than 36 touchdowns. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's mm. a joke. He's going to have, he probably have 10 more than Brady. Than, uh, Brady. Yeah. Yeah. You want to put some do on that? Mm. 10 more touchdowns than Brady. Right now. Done. Got you. Done. I saw you coming. I yep. knew you couldn't help me. Done. <laughs> I knew you couldn't help yourself. I got you. I like the fact that, Skip, you heard him last year. He led his team to the Super Bowl, and won the MVP. And he said, I just started learning how to read defense like eight, nine games into last season. Mm. Can you imagine? I, I will give you that. Ooh, I'm, I'm not sure he was reading them in the Super there Bowl. There you go. There you go. <laughs> He may, he, be, he may be studying that Super Bowl tape right now. Let me I, I, I blew that one, and I missed that read. And you know what? He's the type of guy that yeah. don't take any notes, don't even show up to class, and then pass the test. How you do that? You ain't even take no notes. You ain't got nothing. Mm. Savant. Mm. Yeah. Yo, guy, Skip, he got to take all them notes. He got to break quarantine and be mm. where he's not supposed to be, mm. breaking in people's houses. In the parks when they go in quarantine and say uh, social distancing, stay inside. He outside, he's practicing. My guy, just doing what he's supposed to. Mm. Skip, this is not even close. Mm. Give me Tyreek, give me Hardman, give me Watkins, give me Kelsey, give mm. me that offensive line, mm. and give me my homeboy. Mm. I'm good. Really? Yep. Speaking of a bill, maybe the Chiefs should have sent Mahomes a bill for the <laughs> interceptions he threw in the Super Bowl. If we could just quickly see those again. There's one late in the third quarter. They're down 20 to 10 at this point. I thought this was game over because Mahomes drops back and he throws it, and it's so far off target. It's a big the guy, pick. The guy, uh, uh, the guy went up under the right. I mean, the deep, uh, the linebacker made a great Wait, wait, wait. What, is that open? Is that open? Wait a second. And, and here we go. Oh, that's that same play. Then early in the fourth quarter, it's the next possession. He does it again. He repeats it. He throws another pick. A little and, behind and, it. And it is a sorry pass. It was a little it, behind it. It's a sorry pass, and they're still buying 20 to 10. And it's a little, a little low and outside yeah. to Tyreek. Yeah. He, he, he paid for that yeah. one. He took a shot. But he got it back. And then, of course, a couple of minutes pass, and now it's mid-fourth quarter, and you're still trailing, and it's third and forever, and he throws this, this punt to Tyreek with a rusher in his face. It's kind of a no-look pass because no. I think he knew Tyreek was in the area yeah. code of this ball, yeah. but so could a 49er have been. No. This could have been intercepted. That could have been game over. It was 7-13 left, and he got away with pulling off the play of the game in the Super Bowl, nice. and it wasn't exactly textbook. It was textbook. Okay, and, and then the only reason he kept getting away with this is because in the fourth <laughs> quarter— his opposing quarterback was named Jimmy Garoppolo, who went three for 11 in the fourth quarter for a grand total of 36 yards and missed Emmanuel Sanders wide open with a big step on what, the defense right that, at the goal line with a minute 40 left. What did that have to do with my homeboy? Well, I'm he just did saying, what he was supposed to do. Yeah, but if, if this ball gets completed as it should have, he's got a big step there. If that ball's completed, they're up 27-24, and maybe your guy is the hero. Maybe he pulls them back again. It's a minute and a half to Still go. What's, what's three points when you've been down by 24? Okay. When you've been down by 10? You, you could be, but this was San Francisco, and this was a Super Bowl, and Mahomes had not played very well up to this point. He had a grand total of 62 QBR in this game, scale 0 to 100, so it was just barely above average. I know a guy won a Super Bowl, had a, a QBR mm -hmm. worse than that the previous year. Let's talk about that guy. Yeah, Shall let's we? do that guy just picked an offense that nobody thought that he would pick because he, he just buffaloed the whole National Football League. Nobody <laughs> thought Tom Brady to Tampa Bay? Really? Why did he pick that offense? Because Jameis Winston last year 
led the league in passing. Okay. He was second in the league in touchdown passes. He was three shy of Lamar's MVP 36. He yeah. had 33. So led the league in passing, second in touchdown passes. Meanwhile, he had 12 more turnovers than any other quarterback. By 12 turnovers, he was number one in turnover. That's hard to do. Right. That's a record that will never be broken, I think. <laughs> and meanwhile, his, his turnovers were 26 more than Tom Brady had in New England last yeah. year, in which he had arguably the worst supporting cast, at least the worst receiving core in all of pro football, according to Pro Football Focus, last in separation. But he only had 26 fewer turnovers than Jameis. Well, think about how he's going to clean up Jameis's act this year. And again, I'm a Jameis fan, and, and he, in stretches last year, he was sensational. Mm -hmm. He does have a bigger arm than Tom has at this mm -hmm. point. I will give you that. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about the GOAT. We are talking about pliability plus GOAT equals here we go again at age 43. Your goal is a landline fisher. He fishes from the okay. bank. Okay. But James, James okay. is a deep sea fish. He's throwing the okay. ball. And, which is why he got sacked 47 <laughs> times to Tom Brady's 27 offense, in Foxborough. Hold on. Now, they said the offensive line was rated what last mm -hmm. year? Yeah. And what are they rated this year? Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. That was my next point. They were seventh in the league last year, mm. which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And still gave up 47 sacks yeah. because Jameis is holding it and holding it and, why, and holding it. I'm going to throw a home run. I'm going to throw a home run. Boom! I got hit again. <laughs> and I lost the football. That happened way too often, which is why they went seven and nine okay. last year with all those yards and nothing to show for right. it. Okay, that seventh-ranked offensive line is going to replace the right tackle with a rookie named Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa. They traded up a spot from 14 to 13 to snatch him. Right. I had him ranked the second of the four stud left tackles. He can go either way, but he'll now start out as the right tackle in Tampa. And Pro Football Focus concluded if he grows into that job, they're going to be a top-10 offensive line again. Kansas City's offensive line last year was ranked 16th, and they, now they have it up to 12th. I'm not sure why, but but the, it, Tampa's could be a little better than Mahomes this year if Tristan Wirfs lives up to what I think he and will. And you got to realize, last year, Eric Fisher missed a lot of time with an injury. Skip, you guys on Tampa, your offense is not better in any position. Mm -hmm. You're not better at quarterback. You're not better at offensive line. You're mm -hmm. not better at the skill mm -hmm. position. And you're definitely not better at coaching because mm -hmm. I take Big Red over Bruce Arians. How about that? You know, I wouldn't have before last year, and yeah, all of a yeah. sudden he's riding on because he yeah, finally yeah. won him a Super Bowl. Put his best top he, of the He had a home. hard time in lots of NFC, AFC championship games, but, man, he finally broke through last year, and thanks to Jimmy G, he got him a Super Bowl. Well, how, many, how many Super Bowls Bruce Arians won as mm, a head coach? Well, okay, we're about to have one. No, you're not, you're not you're yeah. about to have any. So last year, you ready for this? Pro Football Focus, speaking of, ranked Tampa's receivers number one in pro football. Number one. Yes. Last year, your receivers in Kansas City were ranked eighth. One to eight. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say that would be advantage Brady because last year they didn't even have this guy named Rob Gronkowski who is now out of football for a whole year. Healthy. He's healed up. He's refreshed. He is reunited with his soulmate GOAT quarterback, TB12, Tom Brady, magic is going to start happening again just with Gronk. And by the way, speaking of that, the, the number one ranked receiving core, guess who they added? They went down in the fifth round and they got a receiver named Tyler Johnson. And by the way, Pro Football Focus also had him ranked the number one receiver. That He was their highest graded receiver in all of college football over the last two years. His stats are a little better over two years than CeeDee Lamb's or Jerry Judy's. Your guy's Jerry Judy, yep. my guy's CeeDee Lamb. Okay. Tyler Johnson's stats were a little better. He did not run the 40. I don't think he's very fast. I think he's 4'6-ish. That's what I believe. Okay. But I watched some Minnesota games last year, and I must I always tell you, sometimes players just flash to me on the TV screen. Mm -hmm. Every time I turn on Minnesota, that guy's catching another pass. He is the prince of midair as, as far as if it's a 50-50 ball, he goes up and gets it. Well, they stole him in the fifth round, and I don't doubt he's going to contribute. And all they have on the outside are two Pro Bowl receivers. Did you have two Pro Bowl receivers on the outside? We good. Mm. The only thing that's going to flash is Tom Brady's season before his eyes. Mm. He's like, what I get myself into? Really? I should have packed this thing up and went on home. Mm. That's what's going to flash.
I've been warning you about little Scotty Miller. He's only a oh, seventh round pick out go. of Bowling Green, but we're talking a little Edelman, a little Amendola all mixed together because he has lightning short area <laughs> quickness. Watch him in the slot. Watch him move and groove in the slot. He is going to get open a lot, and he's going to catch a lot of balls underneath because they not only have Gronk, but they have O.J. Howard, who ran 4-5. What's he weigh, 260? Yeah. You see uh, uh, Jameis throwing that ball over the top. That ain't Brady's game. Okay. Brady will play Brady's game. Yeah, I know. You just give him weapons because he had none last year. He had Julian Edelman beat up, broken yeah, down. Back yeah, all, all he did last year, Julian Edelman, was lead the league in drops. I don't think they're going to have you, you a receiver catch, lead the yeah, league in drops. The way he be fishing, you catch a little brim, you catch mm. a little perch. Really? Now, if you want Big Marlin, you got to go deep. Huh. You got to go way out there. And then when you hook one back the boat down, mm. that ain't how Tom Brady fished. And just, he had, got a little remember, cane pole fishing right remember, there. Okay, the well, speaking of Dinkin and Dakin, <clears throat> I told you after the draft, there's this, this little man out of Vanderbilt University named Keyshawn Vaughn. Oh, there you go. Keyshawn Vaughn. Remember the name because he can catch it as well as he can tote it. And he is stout, and he is explosive, and he will catch a bunch of little dink and dacks from Brady, and he will take them an extra six or eight yards. You just watch. He's got his James White. So in other words. You just watch. Oh, so just throw him the damn ball, huh? Oh, that, that, uh, Keyshawn. that Keyshawn. Just throw him the damn ball, and, and they will. Okay. So I just gave you so many <laughs> weapons that they have an embarrassment of weapons. I don't even know how Tom's going to keep them all happy, but you know and I know that he will figure it out. I'm sorry, Scale. Mm, but I'm no, sorry. Ain't no way. Yeah. Let's put two cases of do. Okay. We well, got I got two, two cases more do. cases to do on that. Well, on what? Just yards, touchdowns? Better, what? better offense. Better offense, yeah. how? Subjectively or it it's it, 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 No, no, no. Like you say, uh -huh. your eye test. Uh -huh. Eye test. <laughs> well, I, I don't trust you to rule on this because you, you have zero objectivity when it comes to number 15 oh, oh, boy. in red. Oh. I can't believe you like a chief. You, of all Denver Broncos. Oh, I mean, everybody know I'm a Bronco, uh, yeah. but uh, I got to have... You, hey, you got Brady, I, so I got to have uh, my homeboy <laughs> okay. to offset you. Good luck. No mercy. Deshaun Watson spoke yesterday about what NFL locker rooms might look like in today's social climate. With the majority of players being black, Watson said, quote, it's definitely going to be a lot of tests for a lot of people, especially for the white teammates. He also questioned if we see white players tagging along for the cause. Shannon, what do you make of his comments? These conversations are going to have to happen, Skip. Um, guys, and, and, and the thing is, is that we've told you, we, we talked about this, we've talked about it a lot, Skip, is that there are going to be players that kneel, there are going to be players that stand. And if the white players are standing, the guys are going to say, okay, you don't have to kneel, mm -hmm. but what are you doing to help this cause? Mm -hmm. Because we've seen players uh, and, and in his locker room, because, Skip, they had a situation a couple of years ago where Dwayne Brown was very outspoken when the owner, the, uh, Mr. McNair, rest his soul. Mm -hmm. yep. He ordered something, and, and there were some black players on that team that took offense to what he said. And they ended up getting Dwayne, they ended up trading Dwayne Brown to Seattle. Mm -hmm. Now, what they have now in that locker room, I don't know how many people know this, Kenny Steels is there. Kenny Stills was one of the guys, the original guy that kneeled. He's on the Players' Coalition. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have some very difficult questions. So these, gonna have, these conversations are going to have to happen. And, and, and the guy that says, okay, you don't have to kneel, but we want to know that you're, trying, that you're with us in this cause, that you're doing something to aid us and to help progress be made. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but we're going to need to see that. We're not going to, and they're not going to lie and say, oh, yeah, I mean, I'm not a racist. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. So conversations, unlike any other time, Skip, will be held in those locker rooms. That's why you see those players, two guys that's never taken a snap for the Dallas Cowboys, mm -hmm. have been very outspoken. We need to hear from Jerry. Just like we heard when this thing flared, uh, uh, reared its head, yep. and you were so outspoken one way, we want to see that same energy, uh -huh. that same passion mm -hmm. right now. Yep. And he's going radio silent. So I agree with Deshaun Watson. There will be some conversations that have to be held. Now, Bill O'Brien said he would be willing to kneel with his players. Um, J.J. Watt is an All-American kid, All-American mm -hmm. from Midwest, Midwest USA. Mm -hmm. It's All-American is cornfields in Wisconsin. You better believe it. The whole thing, the, 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 the and, dairy cow. And he waves that. He, yeah, he, mm -hmm. he comes out waving the flag. Yep. But they're going to want to see J.J. Watt say, okay, okay, J.J., we know you're a great guy, but we need your help on this call. Mm -hmm. 
This was fascinating to me. And I thought about many conversations you and I have had across this desk. I have covered closely a, a number of very good National Football League teams. So I come at it from a media perspective. You were inside the locker room as a leader, mm -hmm. if not the leader of a locker room mm -hmm. in Denver and in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And then back to Denver again. Yep. I covered the Rams out here in the 70s of James Harris and Jack Youngblood. Then I went Jack. to, yeah, you got it. Loved him, uh -huh. stood up for him, still close with him. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Dallas and I covered the Cowboys of Roger Staubach and Drew Pearson, whole different dynamic, which evolved into the Jimmy Johnson Cowboys of Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Chicago and it was Dave Wonstadt's Bears with no stars, but I, it was a whole different feel there, Correct. which led me to San Francisco and the 49ers of Bill Walsh and Mariucci and Terrell Owens mm -hmm. and Jeff Garcia. Yeah. So I have studied these dynamics and you have told me across this desk a number of times that you played on a lot of teams where the golden rule in the locker room was you just check yourself at the door. What, whatever your politics are, whatever your religion is, you just check it at the door, mm -hmm. and everybody kind of knows who everybody right, is. Right, You kind of know. You had an idea where they, you know, who they were voting for yeah, and things of that nature. You kind of do. You and, never brought and, it up. And, 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 you know, there's a Bible study group, and you know there's a group of good old boys who hang out at lunch together, yep. and you know this and you know mm -hmm. that. But basically, as a football team, you just come together, and you have a common goal. Right. And it's to get to and win that that's Super Bowl. Correct. That is and, correct. And many times, many teams I've been around have overcome themselves to win championships mm -hmm. because they had all kinds of locker room potential mm -hmm. turmoil that right. could have just blown the team Absolutely. apart. And you have mentioned often the spitting incident on Monday Night Football featuring your guy, Bill Romanowski, on your team versus J.J. Stokes of the other team. Mm -hmm. But still... It was a big issue in your locker room Correct. with your black player. Correct. So you had to have a big meeting, and you had to face this issue head on. Correct. You led the charge of right. that. Mm -hmm. John Elway had to speak up and out about it, mm -hmm. and you had to settle this issue. Yes. And it became a springboard for your football team. I believe it did. A flashpoint moment, yep. right? Yep. And, and you began to take off after that, right? right? Mm -hmm. And you won the Super Bowl. Won the Super Bowl. Okay. Bingo. This is a new day in a new age, it in is. a new time, and a new way. Yep. I've never heard anything like these comments. Never. I, I get you. I'm with you. I feel everything you just said. It's time to address all of the above. But instead of checking yourself, your off-the-field self at the door, Deshaun's not going to allow it anymore. No. He said, I'm going to test everybody, especially the white teammates. Mm -hmm. Especially the white teammates. I'm going to test them. They're going to have to declare who they are to me right. and to us mm -hmm. because we are a majority black team. So we need to know, are you with us or are you still kind of not with us? What, right. you, maybe you're not against us, but we need to know if you're with right. us. Right, right, right. There can be no Swiftland. No. There uh, can be no neutrality. No. no. So I'm not sure about this phrase, are you tagging along? It's kind of euphemistic a little bit. I'm not sure exactly what it means, but are you, are you, do we have your support? Right. Right. Isn't right. that basically right. how you interpret mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. That's a powerful statement. And the irony of this statement is it came on a, a YouTube live, I believe it was, featuring the moderator, Carmelo Anthony. Right. And the reason that Deshaun was on in the first place, he has written a book on leadership, leadership. National Football League quarterback leadership. It's called Pass It On, all the values that he espouses. Uh, he lists them all. We don't have time to go through them. But, but it, was, it was an interesting interview just about his book. But then... He, he goes in a new direction right. because we're in a new time. We're in a flashpoint time in the history Very of this true. country. And he's saying, as a leader, I'm going to call out or at least call upon each of the white players. Who are you? Where are you? What, what do you think about right. us? Mm -hmm. I need to know before we go to, quote, unquote, battle right. together. And he's also calling on their new chairman and CEO, who is Cal McNair, mm -hmm. to come to the locker room to sit down with them as a team and to, as he said, you need to ask us questions. We're not going to ask you. We, we need to hear from you to us. It's not, it's not the old one-way street of what do you have to say? Right. No, no. Uh, we're going to ask you questions. We're, we're going to actually probe 
to see what you're yeah. made of. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. What, and what, and, and what, he said, what can you do with a, a cow? Yeah. How can you help us? Yeah. How can you help this okay. movement? How can you help our cause? And he concluded, if he will not respond, there's going to be some issues, said Deshaun, yeah. about the Houston Texans. You got some issues going on in your locker room in, in Dallas. Well, do we? <laughs> they made it abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. They're not going to allow Jerry Jones to be silent. Deshaun Watson says there's no more silence. There's no more, I don't want to talk about it, and, you know, and hoping it goes away. You know, people just think that somehow if you don't talk about racism, it'll go away. Skip, if I go to the doctor and the doctor tell me I have cancer, he can't tell me to go home, don't worry about it, it's going to go away. That's how people look at racism. Well, if we don't talk about it, it'll go away. No, it's not. Mm. The problem is we need to talk about it and just try to come to a, 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 and, and come to some type of agreement the things that we're going to do to try to eradicate it. Now, it's going to take a while because mm -hmm. it's been here since the inception of people landed on in 1619. So it's going to take a... Because think about it, Skip. Think about the... Shannon, it's, it's not going to go away. No, no, it's okay. It's not going to go away. Okay. But, but again... We can, we, can, we can do better than what we're doing. We can do better. And I think we have a chance right now to do... I think we are doing this, a little this, better. We're as, taking baby steps. As you said the morning after the, uh, and we, the protest started, mm -hmm. you said maybe this is our watershed moment. Maybe. Maybe this is and, the and to your point, now you gotta drive it home. You, you got gotta to. see results. You, you, you gotta got see to. change. Yes, absolutely. Okay. It, this is what you can't have happen in 2020. Remember what happened to the Steelers, and I believe it was 2017. Well, Remember, Neil or not Neil? Right. And, the, and they're conflicted and they have a meeting on Sunday morning at the hotel in Chicago. Well, we'll do this. Okay, we we all good? We're gonna do this. Well, but if, uh, James Harrison said he went to bed that night thinking everybody was gonna kneel. Right. And then some for some reason, unbeknownst to them, they had coaches on the sideline. They had a couple of guys out, out the tunnel and looking at the Remember, they're in the tunnel right. squabbling about it. Right. Like what well, what is going on here? Remember? Yep. Uh different yeah, the coaches already went out on the sideline. Right. Right. Okay. You, can, you can't it, have that. It Skip. felt like it tore that team apart. It did. It, it was the beginning. Of the, the football. It was the team. beginning of the end. Right. It was the beginning of the end. Okay. And uh, it was never because there was no. And then I think it was was that the next year, Skip, that they came out and then all of a sudden, uh, Le'Veon says, "Nah, I'm good. I, I ain't even. I'm not gonna play." And you all being all selfish. That was. And I'm like, when you go back and look at it. It wasn't just about 29, uh, 2018, Skip. It was 2017 mm -hmm. that started to show the tears and the fabric mm -hmm. of the it team did. concept. Totally agree. So in the end, Deshaun is trying something that's never been done before. I've never heard this no. coming from a quarterback. Mm -mm. And again, does it have potential to split the team? Well, maybe, but, but again, this is what has to happen for, for any of these teams to go forward. This is some... Sh way, shape, or form, and this is going to have to happen in every locker room. Well, Deshaun should say, well, if this splits the team, if you're not trying to get rid of racism, if that's going to cause you to split this team, well, you probably shouldn't be on this team to begin with. Whew. But I, I, I love the, these guys. Are, Skip, these guys, are they're more comfortable in their skin. They have no problem voicing their opinion on issues and, and more the, than they ever the, the white guys are going to have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Very. Mm -hmm. No mercy. The reception of the NBA season is just weeks away, and LeBron James is focused on winning a fourth career championship. We even got the news this week that Dwight Howard will be joining LeBron in Orlando. And according to a Yahoo Sports article, this is LeBron's, quote, last best chance to win a fourth ring in his prime. So, Shannon, is this LeBron's last best chance? No. Who said it? Because they wrote it, that make it true? No, I disagree. I mm. vehemently disagree. I staunchly disagree. I object. You ought to be ashamed, too, mm. for reading that article. Because I know you read it. Yeah, yeah, this is best. No, it's not. I, I got to chuckle at Yeah, I know you did. Mm -hmm. But he ain't slowing down. Mm. And who's to say that we don't make a big blockbuster move next mm. this offseason? You could. Okay, then. Yep. So it, you does could it, have a big three. Does it, does it look like he's slowing down to you? Nope. It doesn't. Mm. So guess what? Mm. And this is going to be a tough, it's going to be a trying time. They got us down in the bubble. Mm. Did you see what they feed them down there in that bubble? Mm -mm. I told you it was like prison. Uh, 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 Troy Daniels show, man, that thing potluck. My grandma said, I said, great, what we eat today? She said, son, it's potluck. I put a bunch of stuff in the pot, you lucky it don't kill you. <laughs> That's what they feed them down there. So how you go from having chefs? I, I don't think it's potluck. No, 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 but it, it's, it's close. Mm. I mean, they, they feed them like they, they, they go into summer camp, mm. bag of chips and, and a little cup of fruit. Mm. You got guys that's making $35, 40000000 million. They're making $70 million, $80 million mm. total. 
and chefs preparing five course meals three, four times a day. And now I gotta eat out of Tupperware? Mm. They like when? How? Trying to keep everybody safe. Yeah, yeah, let us say. Mm. <laughs> you can be out looking. I wanna be fed. You gonna be safe or hungry. You can't be it's the NBA, so you can't be both. We're gonna keep you safe, but you're gonna be go to bed hungry. Mm. He wants to say sleek, right? He needs to keep Le his... LeBron know how to do it. We got our chef coming. We wanted a few that's going to be allowed to bring our chef into really? the public. I yep. did not hear that. Now, don't worry about all that. Okay. See, there you go, Skip Bayless. Yeah. Look, it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Avery Bradley, one of our uh, starters, is not going to be there. He's a mm -hmm. 3 and D guy. He can play great defense. He normally takes the best of player in certain occasions, mm -hmm. except that last time we played the Clippers. Mm -hmm. I got him. Mm -hmm. We refused to utter his name. Mm -hmm. Trade old Benedict Arnold. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Your day coming. <laughs> that day of reckoning is coming, Skip Bayless. Mm. All this thing that you said, all the things that you've done to us, him too. Mm. That okay. day coming. And this is not our best chance. We got plenty more chances. I'm going to give you this much. It's probably not his last chance, but it is by far his best chance of his career to go, quote, unquote, steal a championship. I told you, we just got finished watching the last dance. This is the fast dance to a title. And he is in position eight. The basketball god said, let there be LeBron. He should be prohibitively favored to win this championship, even though he's a co-favorite, his team is, with the Eastern Conference's Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks. I don't buy the Bucks. I'm sorry, they seem like regular season <laughs> wonders to me. Oh, so you don't fear the deer? I do not fear them in the biggest <laughs> series, in the biggest moments, when the money's in the push to the middle of the table. Okay. What happened against Kawhi Leonard's Toronto Raptors last year? They, the Bucks actually won the first two games. Then what happened? They lost four straight, four straight games. Four straight? And Giannis played like he was about six feet, two inches tall <laughs> in those games. Well, Skip, you saw what they did. They kept the man. They walled him off, right? Yeah. And if you look at his numbers in those last four games, they're just pathetic. They the, the big picture, he, in the second halves of those four last games, he was minus 27. In the fourth quarter of those four games, he was minus 29. He just shrank. He just shriveled up and disappeared. Right. Well, you got to keep my okay. in order to beat them, Skip. You got to keep my the pain. All right, but fine. But let me ask you a question. Um, yeah, I believe this is one of his better chances. Did he have? And when he won, went to those four finals in Cleveland, was his chances better then or better now? Way better now. Okay, then. yeah, way better. Yeah. Except he did have that first Golden State team down two games to one with Game Four in his house, and we had no home court. And now we got no home court. Oh, now you got no home court. We didn't have no home court, no series either. Well, what are you talking about? Well, all you had to do is win game four in the King's house, and you're up three games to one. You don't think you could have closed that deal? I we, think you we didn't. We didn't, get, we didn't get it done. Okay. So we, we ain't got no We uh, fighting all, all this. Yeah, Iggy. We, Iggy got it done. Whatever. He was the MVP. We fought very hard, okay, Skip, so this season to get home court. Speaking of the old Cavaliers, got the, I, I, I'm looking at this Milwaukee roster, and I'm saying, where is their championship experience on this roster? Well, they got two players who played in finals. Yeah, George Hill. They got George Hill, got infamously him. known in Cleveland for missing oh, the man, second free throw. Go. Am I right? Yeah. LeBron oh. had the shot, passed it oh. up to George Hill, who missed the second free throw, which led to JR's mental meltdown, right? Yes. Okay, and the other player on that team is when Kyle Korver and LeBron passed up the shot, or at least the drive, to kick it to the corner to Kyle Korver, who missed that shot. So I remember those two players in Cleveland for the wrong reasons, right? Yeah. Those are the only two players with finals experience on the Bucs roster. So wh what am I supposed to think about? Is that a big threat to them? And I told you, the biggest threat is obviously in the West. It's the Clippers. But the Clippers have had their total roster together only 12 times this year. One of those 12 was the loss to the Lakers, the third game. But if you don't mind me asking, Skip, other than Kawhi, who on the roster on the floor that's been to the finals. Okay, I, I got it. Although Paul Kawhi's George, got, Kawhi's got two finals. Has, has Paul George been to the finals? No. Oh, he got he got a loss. He got a, he got an L on that resume too. Mm -hmm. Don't pretend like you don't know that. I know exactly what he has, and and I told you that Kawhi and Paul George only played 32 games together. Your guy and his new co-star from New Orleans played 53 games together. The Clippers needed reps. They needed to finish out on time, in sequence, the regular season to figure out how to play together to beat that guy how, when it mattered. Well, how are they going to do that with Kawhi playing every other day? 
Well, now he will play every day. He ain't got no choice. Got no choice. Got no choice. Well, okay, but he's fresh, so they got that. Oh, game. but so he but they break. don't. They don't have any experience. He just got five months off in year seventeen. So did Kawhi. Five months off. Kawhi's not in year seventeen. Kawhi body feel like he in year twenty. That's why he missed <laughs> twenty right. games last year, okay. eleven this year so far. He needed experience with his new team, and, and what, he didn't get it. And what about that seventy-three games he had a couple years ago off? Yeah, well, he did. Seventy-three. Okay. All right. Well, he quit on my Spurs. I've told you that from the start. And you support But he had a master plan in mind, and he executed it brilliantly. Toronto, oh, I think I'll go to Toronto and just win the championship in the finals MVP, uh, and then I will jerk the rug right out from under that man. No, excuse me. What, no, I master, will shock yeah, the world. No, no, first of all, that was not a master plan. What he did is kind of it's the equivalent of me, my car breaking down side the road. I got out to look and see what's wrong with it, and then I see a bag of money in the ditch. That's what happened. Because Kawhi stumbled upon that plan. Well, that's his second finals MVP. So I look back at LeBron's competition in the finals. If we go back to 2012, his breakthrough year against the baby Ain't Thunder. no baby. Okay? They, they were baby, but they, they, they were just loaded with potential or future Hall of Famers. Yeah. They got KD MVP. and Russ and James Harden, yeah. right? And I look at that team, and they did have Perk, and they did have Tabo, and they did Serge have Nick Ibaka. Awesome. They had Serge Ibaka. You know, Ibaka. Ibaka. Yeah. yeah. And they had Derek Fisher on that team. So it was a legitimate threat in the finals, and they blew out LeBron's team in game one, and then LeBron got a call in game two. No, do that. Get that. You go. Well, he did. He got a call. But that's okay. And then... We look at what happened the rest of that series, and LeBron had, he was blessed that series because, remember, in game two, Shane Battier hit five threes. That's huge. You don't expect it from Shane Battier. Why not? And then game three, Dwayne Rosen shown. He was the star to me of game three. And then game four was the Mario Chalmers game. We're going to talk about Mario a little later in the show, but Mario, remember, he had 12 points in the fourth quarter to save LeBron's bacon, and then... Game five became the closeout game, shockingly, and Mike Miller hit seven threes in the game. So, again, it was meant to be. He won the ring. God bless him. Way to go, LeBron. It's about damn time, he said after the Why game. Why do you do that? Well, that's what he said. No, I'm no, just no, 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 I'm not about what he said. Okay? I'm but saying, I, why I'm, do you I'm do that? I'm showing you that, that at least they were a legit threat in 2012. All of a sudden, I'm not sure who the legit threat is to his dominance this year. He is prohibitively favored. No, I'm not going to let you get away with this that. This is the easiest path. This should be a cakewalk in Orlando. No, I'm not going to let you get away with this. LeBron James is the only t guy that has teammates. When they do what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. when they do what they're asked to do, they say LeBron's bacon. Mm -hmm. Everybody else has teammates that do it. That's the mark of a great team. Uh, yada, yada, yada. But you, every time LeBron teammates do with it, so he was supposed to go out there and score 150 points? Mm -hmm. And win the game by himself? If Ray Allen lips out that shot uh, in the corner, if he lips it out, LeBron is 2-7 and seven in the finals. Okay, what if Steve Kerr missed that three? What if Paxson missed that three? They weren't do or die. Uh, well, would have, yeah. hmm? well, all would have happened. Jordan would have just figured it out and finished it off. No, 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 yeah, he'd we, say, okay, I'll left. just do it myself. All I know is that LeBron, Ray Allen did hit a shot. Mm. Kudos. But who took the uh, overtime over? My team was shot in the heart. They don't shot in the heart. Wow. Shot in the heart. <laughs> Lying dead on the floor. But, they couldn't even pick themselves but, up psychologically. But what about game one? You talk about LeBron James went and he fought in the stands. He wouldn't even sit with his teammates. Game one at Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he sat about four feet away. He said, don't, don't associate me with that bunch over there. Coronavirus, huh? social distance. <laughs> oh, well, see, he, he saw it coming. He saw it coming years ago, right? Yeah. He's so ahead of the curve, I'm staying away. Okay. No mercy. Eagles wide receiver Deshaun Jackson is facing criticism after sharing an anti-Semitic quote that was attributed to Adolf Hitler. Jackson also shared admiration for Nation of Islam leader Louis Farrakhan. Jackson has since said people took his post the wrong way, and he has no hatred in his heart towards anyone. The Eagles released a statement that in part said the posts were, quote, offensive, harmful and absolutely appalling. So Shannon, should he be punished? Skip there on a slippery slope because precedent has already been set. As you mentioned it earlier, the Riley Cooper incident happened in Philadelphia it in did. 2013. And this is what they said. This is what the Eagles wrote when they, their statement. In a meeting with Riley yesterday, we decided together that the next step will to be will to seek outside assistance to help him fully understand and impact the words of his act or and actions. Mm -hmm. Skip, where was the appalling statement? 
Let's give a where's the offensive statement? Mm, that's a good point. Thank you. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Skip, this is what we're fighting for. You see? You see the difference in, in how offensive and outraged they were when Deshaun Jackson tweeted what he tweeted and when Riley Cooper said what he said. Precedent has been established. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe another organization could have said, you know what, Deshaun, we're going to suspend you and we're going to find you. But it's going to be hard for Eagles. The e Eagle organization, to, to they did find Riley Cooper, mm -hmm. but it's going to be hard for them to suspend Deshaun. Now, they can do what they want to do. It's their organization. But it's going to look highly hypocritical, Skip. Because an incident happened similar under your watch, and you sent the guy home and you gave him an extension. So the president, the groundwork has been laid how you view this subject. Now, people view things differently. Now, I understand the cancel, uh, the cancel culture now, Skip. Mm -hmm. <sighs> They're not giving a whole lot of second chances, especially in 2020. One slip up, I mean, Skip, we see people saying things with the, with the movement and protesters and, hey, Internet's doing their investigation, find out where that person works, send that information to his employer. Employer said, nah, there's too much heat, bro. I, 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 it's too hot out here for me. You, you got to go. So, but the precedent for the Eagles and how they handled the situation prior has been set. It's going to be interesting to see mm -hmm. how they deal with this, but the precedent is there, Skip. Mm. Okay. You started this show by saying that you reached out to Deshaun. I did. And he reached back, and you had a good conversation. I did. And I trust your radar. I, I trust your, if, if I might, your BS detector. Mm -hmm. And I think you bought his apology as incredibly sincere, yeah. like convincingly yes. sincere, right? Yes. From what you heard yes. over your phone. I did. Not eye to eye, but just over R the phone. Over the phone. I've been around Deshaun, had him on shows before, and I've had a couple of off-camera conversations with him, and I want to like him. I want to believe in him and his apology, and I hate that he is going through this. But I do believe, and I'll, I'll get to the why of this in a moment, I do believe he needs to be suspended just in the vacuum of what just happened. Mm -hmm. He needs to be suspended one game just to send a message. And this is more of a league issue than a Philly issue mm -hmm. that the message needs to be sent. You just can't do that. You can't go there on any form of social media. Mm -hmm. as, if, as you said earlier, once you invoke that Hitler word, that, mm -hmm. that Hitler name, mm -hmm. it's over. Yeah. You, you're <laughs> talking about the most infamous anti-Semite who ever walked this earth, the devil incarnate. Mm -hmm. And once you go there, no matter what you're trying to do with the rest of your post, it's disqualified. It's moot. Yes. Okay. So back to the Riley Cooper incident. Mm -hmm. You can look up the clips. I was outraged the next day on the old show I did on the other network. And I called for that man's job. You have to cut him today. Mm -hmm. There's no way the black players, the black leaders on that football team can reside with him in mm -hmm. the locker room the rest of this year. It's over. Right. Once that word, the most evil word in the English language, tumbles out of your mouth, even though you are intoxicated, as you always say, that is the truth <laughs> serum, right? Yeah. Okay, what do you always say? It's drunks, drunk. kids, and angry people. Okay. And he was two of those three. Drunk and angry, huh? Yeah, and, and maybe he's still Acting a like big a kid. kid, but I don't know. But he's at a country western concert, and he gets mad at some of the security people. And I'll fight all those ends. And we're talking about the N-word that right. ends in the hard E-R. Correct. And once that tumbles out of your mouth, for me, you are disqualified right. permanently. You are done. For me, he was done in the National Football League. To my shock, Michael Vick, whom we've had on the show many times, stood up for him the next day and said, I've always thought that Riley was a good dude and, and we forgive and we forget. But Skip, remember, Mike came out here and said... He regretted it. Oh. He, he said because Chip Kelly put him on the spot. Yes, he did. He said, Mike, you know, it, it, it'd be, you know, you were the leader of this team and, and Riley has apologized. It'd be great if you were to... So he put... He put, he put him in a bad spot. Exactly. Mike who had been through the ringer, had been to prison. I think he was trying to do right. the right thing, right. you know, right. try, trying to be a good man. And 
and basically give said, another man a second chance. Fact, you took okay. the word right out of my mouth. Right. They gave me a second chance. Let me ha- give okay. this man a second chance. Oh, man. And he says today, you know, when we've talked to him about it, I regret that right. I did that. Not only did they give him a second chance, they gave him another contract a few <laughs> months later. Yeah. They, they gave him, it was like five years, 25 mm-hmm. million. <sighs> what? I remind you, that was the Chip Kelly regime. Mm-hmm. And Chip Kelly was constantly at odds with his skill position players, the black players. Yeah. And one after another, he Sean got McCoy. rid of them, right? Yep, DJ. And Sean. there was always a lot of back and forth crossfire and mm-hmm and negativity between Chip Kelly and his black players, and some of that continues today at UCLA, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so Michael Vick saved Riley Cooper's job to me. he did. And yet, that was just flat out wrong. Well, again, the oldest cliche, two wrongs don't make a right. That happened, and you were right about that. That organization looked the other way, led by Chip Kelly, and by the way, when Chip Kelly traded Deshaun to Washington, mm-hmm. as he left town, he just basically ran him out of town. Right. But remember, it, it felt like there was a character assassination attempt right. leaked by the Eagles, yeah. by the Chip Kelly regime. I won't go into the details, but I staunchly defended Deshaun over all of the above because it felt like they were trying to just besmirch his character yeah. as he left town. Hey, Skip, in, 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 part, in the last part of the Eagles mm-hmm. statement said, he needs to reflect as an organization, we will provide the resources he needs to do so. Now, if I'm not mistaken, was Mr. Lurie the owner of the Eagles? If I'm not mistaken, was Howie Roseman the general manager of the Eagles when Riley Cooper said what he said? Let's skip if they, if they if they had done, if they had followed your advice and released Riley Cooper for what he has said, and all of a sudden Deshaun tweets this, I got no problem. I got no problem with it because it seems because what, what, what I don't want is to feel like that black's feelings mm-hmm. are aren't as important as someone else's feelings. Okay. And, I, I, don't, and I don't want that to happen with because you. that's what we see and this is what we're, because if you do that, mm-hmm. now black people say, see, this is what we've been talking okay. all along, I that we it. don't get fair treatment in the judicial system. We don't get fair treatment on the, uh, 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 in employment mm-hmm. because he uttered something he got a promotion. We order something, we lose our job. So I don't want it to be that, Skip. If, you, if the Eagles had said, you know, our president, when you say something like this or you do something like this, we cut bait. Mm-hmm. Skip, I got no problem. I got no problem whatsoever with that. Okay. Back to Deshaun. The times we've had him on this show or I've had him on other shows, the irony of this discussion we're having is He's always very careful and guarded on the air to to the point that I feel like I'm trying to pull teeth to get him to say something. Right. You ask him anything remotely controversial, no, I'm not going to touch that one. So that's why I was like, Deshaun, what what are you doing? Right. Deshaun's a smart young man, but he's 33 now. He's entering his 13th year in the league, so it's hard for me to give him that rookie or second-year player pass of, you're just naive. You you just didn't know what you were doing. He's heard countless lectures from countless executives and ex-players in the National Football League about the dangers of social media. He had to know that you cannot hit send because you you are risking suspension. You're risking your very job if you hit send on the wrong tweet or post. Correct. So... In the end, I look at this young man who, out of Long Beach Poly, went to the University of California at Berkeley. It is one of the most distinguished institutions of higher education in America. One of the most open-minded, Skip. You remember what happened? Well, well, uh, the protests (laughs) in the 60s, they all started at Berkeley, right? (sighs) Okay, so... It's hard for me to believe that Deshaun Jackson, at age 33, is completely naive to Hitler. Oh, yeah, he knows who Hitler is. Okay, all right, got that. And this is, my point is, Louis Farrakhan, we haven't discussed him here, we discussed him earlier in the show, Mm -hmm. but just no matter what you think of him, and you've had conversations with him about Mm -hmm. these issues, Mm -hmm. but Deshaun had two other posts on, I believe, Saturday and Monday expressing admiration for Louis Farrakhan. 
whom the Anti-Defamation League and the Southern Poverty Law Center has identified, or they have identified, as anti-Semitic. Deshaun deleted those posts. Mm -hmm. But they set the wrong tone for the Hitler post. Right. Because it looked like one, two, three, right? So because you go three in a row that, that appear to have at least anti-Semitic right. undertones to right. them, now I'm saying, Deshaun, you, you've gone too far. A message has to be sent, if not by the Eagles, by the league to say, I'm, I'm sorry, this is like the league said, called it highly inappropriate, offensive and divisive. Can't do it. Got to suspend him for one game. I get the double standard. You're saying, well, wait a second, Riley Cooper back to Deshaun. It, it doesn't. Two plus two don't equal four there, right? right? It's not fair. Right. They don't equal two plus two don't equal four. Fair, fair, right? Correct. Okay. Skip, my thing for players or anyone moving forward, never use a bad person to make a point, even if you believe it's valid or well intended. Right. If, oh, if Skip, if you do that, I believe you'll be okay. Because it's the fact that he attributed that quote to Hitler, where he's yeah. saying trying to empower the blacks and like pull together, let's come together. Mm -hmm. We have a voice. Our voice is larger than you may realize mm -hmm. if we all sing in unison, if we all yell in unison. Okay, that's a very valid point. But because you attributed the point to him, mm -hmm. people are like, that's game over. Even though the, the back end of that quote, right. I get what he's saying right. because it right. uplifts. Right, right, the, right. The quote uses a different term, an old school term, right. but, right. but it right. uplifts the black community. Correct, correct. As the black community could save you from. Right. Okay, so, I don't want to get into the details so of let's it. Just, yeah. So just so people at home are clear, mm -hmm. I vehemently disagree with the, what Deshaun Watson tweeted. Mm -hmm. I don't co-sign that. And he has to do a better job of understanding what he's tweeting, because mm -hmm. when you retweet something, Skip, you co-signed it. You know how I know? Because I just co-signed an apartment for my daughter in Indiana. Uh -huh. Hey, I, I co-signed. I'm on the hook. You are. I'm on the hook. hook. Yep. So she missed a payment. Guess who they're looking for? They're looking for daddy to pay that bill. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Deshaun, understand that. Anybody out there at home, understand that. If you like something. You. Uh, okay. Skip, people send me a lot of things and want me to repost it. Mm -hmm. I open it up and I read it. Like, nah, this ain't this ain't on brand for Shane, bro. I got to let that one go. Even though there might be yeah. kernels of it, nuggets of right, it, you say, right. oh, I, I'm with that, but it's I not, can't. If my grandma say, boy, it ain't enough meat on that bone, let it go. Deshaun, you made a horrible mistake here. And hopefully, uh, um, I, and I believe you were sincere in your apology, but it's not up to me. It's up to the Eagles organization. They're going to do what they're going to do. But like I said, I believe the precedent and the framework, the groundwork has been laid considering but I can't understand, Skip, how you issue a statement regarding Riley Cooper said in a meeting with Riley yesterday, nothing about appalling, nothing about offensive. That's appalling. Yes! Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. No mercy. A report surfaced yesterday that Cam Newton is fully aware that the starting quarterback position in New England is not his and that there will be an open competition for the job. Cam also reportedly understands that it might be difficult to get up to speed with a short-ended offseason. Now, Shannon, should Cam be upset, and how should he feel about this open competition? <laughs> if he knew what the deal was when he signed with the Patriots, Bill Belichick, nothing is promised with him. Mm. And the mere fact that he had a one-year deal told Cam that he was going to have to win this job. It wasn't going to be given to him. Teddy Bridgewater is the starter in Carolina. You know how we know, Skip? They gave him three years, $66 million. That's how you know you're the starter. Mm. Tom Brady is the starter in, in Tampa. Mm. You know how I know, Skip? They gave him two years, 50 million, fully guaranteed. Mm. Cam, Cam Newton got 1.75 with 550 guaranteed. So in other words, you're in a dogfight. You win the job, you start. If not, you hold the clipboard until deemed necessary. Mm. That's just the way it works in New England, Skip. You don't get promised. You don't get promised anything. He makes it a competition. He doesn't want you to rest on your lawn. Well, I got this thing made. You know, I can sit back and, you know, fat cat now. You're not fat cat on Bill Belichick dying. Mm -hmm. He will get you up out of there. And he paid you like a dime. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he, he won't even let you the fat cat skip, but he, paid, he gave you chicken feet. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so that's just the way it is. I think Cam understands that. Cam, Cam understands he's going to have to go in there. He's going to have to work his tail off. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have to earn this job, which I believe Cam Newton will. But... I don't think Cam is surprised by anything that's going on uh, um, in New England. I'm sure Coach Belichick conveyed that to him when they had conversations mm. that 
You win the job, you start. If not, okay. So I read this yesterday, and I sat back and tried to let it compute, let it process. Five years ago, Cam Newton was the MVP of this league and lifted a 15-1 and team uh -huh. into the Super Bowl. He did not play well in the Super Bowl. Neither did Peyton Manning. Right. In fact, he played better than Peyton, but the Denver defense just took the game over, especially right. Von Miller. The point is, that man has gone from that and even a, a spectacular stretch in 2018 before he hurt his shoulder to this, he has been relegated to fighting for a starting job with Brian Hoyer, who is now on his 10th NFL stop. He's been to the <laughs> Patriots three times, but he has changed teams 10 times. Right. Think about it. Is that not the ultimate definition of journeyman quarterback? Yeah. Well, Skip, that's how it works. You leave your, you leave your work on good terms, okay. you should always be able to go back. Brian Hoyer is not bad. He's had his moments. Yeah. He's 16 and 22 as a start. He had yeah. a nice stretch for the Browns one year. Played well in Houston. Uh, he played well in Houston, got him in the playoffs, play, yeah. started a playoff game. He has 52 touchdowns in his career to 34 interceptions. Not bad. Right. He really knows this offense. So mm -hmm. I do not doubt that if they do play a couple of preseason games, and I don't know what's going to happen, but what, whatever, or even in camp practice, right. I don't doubt that Brian Hoyer will play pretty to very well. Correct. Jared Stidham stunk it up his second year at Auburn. He was very good his first year, but he stunk. He, he lost his way, he lost his confidence. He often lost his poise in games, which is why he fell to the fourth round. So the last time I saw him in a competitive situation, he was not great. Right. He is going to get an equal shot at winning this job because right. it appears, by all accounts in New England, Belichick has already developed sort of a soft spot for a kid he calls Stid. Mm -hmm. Never called Brady any sort of Tommy type. Yeah, yeah, he called him. Uh, no, all right, he called but him, but not this. He didn't call him <laughs> Stid. Okay, so now Cam knew. What, what did I say repeatedly about Cam when he sat and sat on the open market? He was born to be a starter and a star. Right. You can't have Cam holding a clipboard. He, his personality is too big. He has too much pride. Don't, don't do that to him. It's all or nothing with him, and it should have been all in with, with the Chargers out here in Los Angeles. It's like, how can you not? Take Cam Newton. He's yeah. better than Tyrod. He, he, I think he's better than that kid out of Oregon they drafted, yeah. Justin Herbert. Herbert. Skip, if I'm working and all of a sudden I lose my job mm -hmm. and nobody's calling, I send out my resume and nobody calling and nobody calls and all of a sudden after three, four months, a job opportunity comes up. Mm -hmm. But it's not even a tenth or one-fifteenth of the pay that I'm normally making. Now, I can sit at home and be prideful. No, it says, not. you know what, man? man uh, this is beneath my dignity. Okay, well, it is. This is. But he got his foot back in the door, and he has a chance and the challenge of replacing the goat in Foxborough. That's pretty cool. But he's doing it for a base salary of one, barely over $1 million. Yeah, okay. Patrick Mahomes just got a signing bonus of 63.7 million. 50 million this year. Woo. Okay. Patrick Mahomes could make $500 million over the next 12 years, Ooh. and Cam is making $1 million, and he's a former MVP. I, I'm just saying, it, it, the optics of it are just staggering to me. I don't, I don't get it. It's hard to process that well, for me. It's, it's called supply and demand. Okay, I got it. One guy was in heavy demand. The right. other guy wasn't. So did you watch the video Cam posted? I think it was Sunday on IG. I did not. Whew. He just went off because his pride is killing him, and he has massive pride and pride that he has earned in the National Football okay. League. We, we both agreed he sort of died for the cause in Carolina. He just got beat all to hell Be yep. by, by making plays to, to try to elevate the Carolina Panthers right. because he can beat you with his physicality as well as with right. his arm. So in, in the IG post, he just goes off. It's like he, he finally just lost it and said, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to say what I believe. And the first thing he did, he took a shot at T uh, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. He said, you're going to choose that over this? And then he said, I am a monster, but I am tired of being humble now. And he went on to say, I'm tired of all this humble SH because when you humble, they start taking advantage of you. Well, Belichick was able to take advantage of his quote unquote humil his humbled situation, right? right? Mm -hmm. And then the final analogy was 
an animal kingdom analogy. And he talked about all the animals out in the animal kingdom. He said, you got the hyenas, they do what they do, and the elephants do what they do, and the giraffes and the antelopes, the chimpanzees, even the gorillas. They do what they do. But there's one mf an animal in the jungle, and when he roar, everything stops. And you know and I know what he is talking about. And he says, I am about to mf and roar. Okay? We get a metaphor. Huh? We get a yeah. metaphor, but okay. theoretically, lions are not in the jungles. That's tigers. Okay. But we get the point okay. where he's well, making. Well, that's, that's what he's saying. Okay. I, I got you. They're out on the Serengeti. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Out in the plains. But, yeah. but the point is, yeah. when they roar for 10 miles, other yeah. animals are like, huh. You know it. Ha, ha, ha. It's unmistakable. Because that's the one force you cannot defeat. Right. And it's hard to even outrun that force. Right. Unless you're a gazelle, maybe you got a chance, right? right? So the point is, he, he, he is flexing all of his considerable muscles because his pride has been battered right. here, right? Right. And he's saying, okay, I'm relegated. I got to go up there. I got to compete with Brian Hoyer right. and Jared Stidham. It's a three-way battle. Right. An equal battle. We all get our chances. Right. Are the reps going to be a third, a third, and a third? And yeah. I probably, I guess so, yeah. right? Yeah. Whew. So it's come to this for Cam Newton? Yeah, Skip, I get what Cam's saying, but Cam has to understand. Cam, your stock wasn't that high. You got to rebuild it. Skip, you remember when you when you, you rented a car, you basically had, you know, you had Hertz, you had Avis, you had Dollar. Okay, Hertz went bankrupt. They selling for, you know, 10, 90 cents. Google mm -hmm. and Apple selling for three, four, five hundred dollars. No, okay, they're valuable. Cam, there are other teams that didn't see the value in you. You have to restore that. You can't get mad at us. Stop. And plus, another thing, get off social media. Yeah, I agree. Because, I, I, when, I know, because you're reading that, oh, Cam's been humble. You're reading that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Cam, it ain't what they say, it's mm -hmm. what you do. Yep. They can call, they can say whatever. They, I have to tell you, Skip, my grandma used to tell me all the time. My brother would call me a name. I said, Granny, he called me a name. She said, Boy, it ain't what he called you. What your answer to? I know. All that, that other is stuff, true. Cam, is unimportant. Yep. You, if you go be Cam Newton, if you go do what I believe you can do, and what you've done the previous year, and when you were healthy, mm -hmm. and it's a no-brainer. Okay. I still think Belichick has this master plan, so to speak, of using multiple quarterbacks. He might have a Cam package of plays that work for Cam. He might have Stid plays that are just more. So where is Brian Hoyer? I don't know, but Brian Hoyer is probably going to be in this mix. He got, he got a package, too? Yeah. Well, he might. He <laughs> might, because he's going to be the most accomplished at running this offense. Right. You can bet on that. Right. But my point is... If Cam Newton does not win any part of this job, if he is just simply the backup quarterback, yeah, that's, I, I don't love this, man. I don't, I don't either. Woo. I don't either. But I ain't even worried about it. I, I don't even think like that. Cam got this one. I ain't even worried about it. Skip. I mean, look, Secretary w w Big Red, that chestnut bay cook, uh, mm -hmm. uh, coat, it do what it do. He was the best in the field. Right? It wasn't. People like making the scene like it was Ron Turcott. It wasn't. No. It wasn't. Oh, no, Lord, no. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen anything like that. No, before. nobody's ever seen anything yeah. like it. You remember Belmont? Yes. Whew. 31 and a half length. <laughs> okay. Now, a little competition is good. I feel like it, it lights a fire. And we've got some more competition for you. Uh-uh. Brandon Moss racked up 23 receiving touchdowns from Tom Brady in 2007, but that didn't stop the Hall of Famer from singing the praise of Patrick Mahomes. Moss said in his prime he would have had 30 touchdowns if he played with Patrick Mahomes. So, Shannon, was this disrespectful to Brady? Absolutely not. Because Mahomes had that kind of arm. He got that arm that can get him the ball 60, 70 yards down the field, throw it up and jump. Skip Bayless? I mean, why is it disrespectful? No, it's realistic. Mm. He said, if I'd have had a quarterback that can launch that ball like Mahomes and believe in me and say, you know, when I say put it up down the field, mm. going to give me that opportunity? Because mm. he going to throw caution to the wind. Absolutely. Stop it. Ain't, no, ain't even a question. Do you believe Tom Brady is more arm talented than Patrick Mahomes at any point in his 20-year career? A simple yes or a simple no will suffice. Well, I, arm talent? Where, where did that get Jeff George? Whoa, whoa, Seriously. whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. We did, where did, did, did it get this it? This ain't no Jeff George here. Mm. It is him, boy. Like, this, he got arm talent like number seven. Mm, I saw some Jeff George throws in the no, Super Bowl no, 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 late third quarter, <laughs> early fourth. You be hating. Mm. You be hating. Mm. Skip, I mean, just imagine... Uh, uh, Mahomes throwing the ball up to Randy down the field. He's putting the ball up to uh, uh, Tyreek. Tyreek's, what, 5'8", 5'9"? 
So imagine six, four and a half, mm -hmm. and you're putting the ball up down the field. Yep. At, th at 30, Randy hit the nail on the head. I was going to say like 28, but I trust Randy. Mm. 30. Mm. Tubbs. You upset. <laughs> Look, I, I keep asking myself, what just happened to Randy Moss? What just happened between Randy Moss and Tom Brady? D did they have a falling out that I'm not aware of? I don't know, because every time Randy lately has talked about Tom Brady, it comes across as negativity to me. How? Tom Brady. Well, you know, last week it was about more fun with Cam Newton here. that the offense is going to be a lot more fun to watch. Really? <laughs> Okay, just for the record again, Randy Moss isn't just good on TV. He is great yeah. on TV. And I love it that he has opinions. I don't love this opinion because it hurts me to my, my core. Because it's true. Soul. Those two guys in 2007, they made NFL history. That, that was a union made in Pro Football yeah. Hall of Fame heaven. Mm -hmm. It was and again, I'm the biggest Randy Moss fan in that he was the greatest, most electrifying deep threat this league has ever seen. As you point out, 6'4 and a half, 4'240, with not good hands, just great hands. Yep. Like, they were so great that everything was effortless. There was never a catch where I said, oh, that was a great catch because right. he just sort of right. effortlessly just snagged it, mm -hmm. right? So when you put that with the GOAT Tom Brady and 2007, every record fell. I know Peyton broke a number of the records, mm -hmm. but one record has stood, and that's 23 right. touchdown mm -hmm. catches by Randy, Randy Moss mm -hmm. in 2007. So I'm thinking, don't you, don't you cherish those moments? Don't, don't you honor those moments? Don't, don't you regard them with such sort of historical perspective? Like, that was very special <laughs> that we got to do that together. Yeah that you would honor Tom a little bit by saying, well, I don't know. You know, maybe maybe they throw more in Kansas City. Maybe I would have more of a chance. Yeah. You could put it in a different perspective. Yeah. Oh, yeah, i catch 30, 30. <laughs> you know, like it would be easy 30. And it, it, it comes across as, as disrespectful to Tom. It comes across as, oh, well, come on. Obviously, Mahomes is a lot better than Tom Brady. No, he's not. No. And I don't believe Tom, that, that Randy Moss believes no that Mahomes is that much better. Did he get caught up in the moment on TV? I don't know, maybe, but in the end, 2007 was so special to Brady that we talked about this last week. He picked it as his defining moment in his career, not any Super Bowl. He played nine Super Bowls in 20 years and won six of them. Mm -hmm. He picked an obscure game with Randy Moss in 2007 at Buffalo on a Sunday night, mid-30s, reasonably high wind, mm -hmm. and he thought it was as close to perfection as he will ever get. He said, ever since that moment, I've been trying to get back to that. He went 31 of 39 at Buffalo. Four touchdown passes went to Randy Moss. The first seven times, the only seven times Tom had the ball or the offense had the mm -hmm. ball, they scored touchdowns. Right. So he went seven for seven in touchdowns. Four touchdown passes to Randy Moss. Wouldn't you hold that dear to your heart? I mean, uh, my homeboy said, I did that in the playoff game. Oh. He said, you remember what I did in Houston? Mm. I mean, how many times we have the ball and I get a touchdown, 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 touchdown? Well, how about go the first five times we have the ball? Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. I'm just saying. Mm. He'll, he's done that. His, his second start of his career, throws five touchdowns on the road. Mm. Didn't he do that against the Steelers? Mm. So, well, Scam, stop this. Mm. And I get it. Look. You're right. You have to be very, very careful mm -hmm. of when you, like, I, I remember going to the Pro Bowl, and, you know, Skip, I'm catching passes for Marino mm -hmm. and Warren Moon and Joe Montana. Yeah, you better you know, be careful. Yeah, man. I, <laughs> hey, I'll catch y'all when I see y'all at the Pro Bowl. I got to play with this guy for 16 games. Yeah. I'm not fooling with y'all. Oh, it was mm. great. I had a great time over there. Mm. I'm taking seven. Mm. <laughs> I ain't no dummy. Mm. Hey, that man got pride. That man, I, hey. I, I just wonder if Randy watched just two years ago what Tom Brady did to that man. Remember the first? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. The first game was at Foxborough on a Sunday night. Tom Brady threw in the fourth quarter for 182 yards and won a shootout with the young gun. And then he went to his place at Arrowhead and converted three straight third and tens in overtime to beat him in the AFC Championship game. I'm going to do you like you do me. Does Pat Mahomes play defense? 
Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, because, you know, when Tom Brady, when, when Tom Brady got, when somebody like no Tom, oh, does Tom play defense? Mm. Oh. Well, for, for half a billion, maybe he should uh, play no, defense, no, no, no. right? No, we just go, mm. ooh, ain't no mm. telling what he might do. Still. Yeah. For half a bill, mm. he got security now. Mm. He's like, I ain't got to worry about nothing. I can throw caution to the wind. Mm. 60 touchdowns. Really? Might happen. We got the Michael Jordan of the NFL. Is that Call the shots. Really? 60 might happen. 60 might happen. I'll bet you uh, <laughs> 10 cases of diet do he doesn't throw 60 what, touchdown they, passes this year. You know what happens, Kip? Mm. They get the big lead, they come out. Uh, kind of like us in 98. Ain't no uh, telling how many touchdowns I could have had okay. if Mike had to take taken me out, I'll, beating the Cowboys. I'll bet you 100 cases of diet do they don't go 16 and 0 this year. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Thank Skip, you. At the end of they're going to be in Tampa. Mm. They're going to probably be in Tampa. Your team won't. Oh, well, you know wait, my team lives in Tampa. You think Brady? My team's going to be the first Super Bowl team to play a home Super Bowl. You think Brady might be willing to sublease Jeter's house to my homeboy? Because we going to need it. Really? <laughs> For the week? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he could come live with him, I guess. No, no, we want no part. <laughs> nah, we want no part. We don't want that, that non-playoff mojo to rub off on us. Really? Huh. Well, Tom's gotten the best of him most of the time. No, before. No, no, He'll no, get no, him again. No, 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 no. Yeah. Well, the only time you can get him this time is they meet in the Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying. You don't want that skill. Yep. Mm. Hang a hundred on y'all. Mm. No mercy. LeBron James is hitting his mid-season form on social media. The King posted a picture of himself this week shirtless while wearing a mask on the basketball court. The caption simply said, War ready, with the hashtag, Revenge season continues soon. Shannon, do you like this? It's on. It's on. It's on. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're wrecking it. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, Skip. Boy, yes. You can't miss that. It's you know it's on. Skip, <clears throat> he's been on a mission to show, because everybody says, oh, you're 17. Oh, he's going to be declining. You remember what happened last year? They didn't miss the playoff. He got injured for the first time. LeBron James is starting to show his more talent. No, no, wait a minute, mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. For the first time in 16 years, I get an injury. Mm -hmm. And now y'all think I stepped off a cliff. Mm -hmm. I'm 25, 8, and 8. Doing that. Now he's bumped that up. Now he's leading the league in assists. Mm. In year 17, something that's never Woo. been done. So let's give his own. He's, he's, he's trying to show that last year was a fluke. He finished outside of the top five in MVP voting for the second time in his career. Mm. 05, Skip, was the last time he finished outside of the top five. That was his second year in the league. Mm. He's like, that ain't me. Y'all think that's Gold James? Ah. <sighs> Somebody's going to have to deal with this, Kip. Mm. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. Huh. That's why I had a problem with it. <laughs> <clears throat> so we recently had the privilege of watching The Last Dance. I had the privilege and the honor of covering Michael Jeffrey Jordan in Chicago in 1998, that last go-around with those Bulls, and he won his sixth MVP. As He went 6-0 and in the finals. There was no social media in 1998. Yeah. But if there had been, I believe Michael Jordan would not have been on it because I he's would. never been on it. Michael didn't have to tell you what he was about to do. He just went out and did it to you. And can you imagine Michael Jordan posting on social media in 1998? I'm war ready. I mean, it would be laugh out loud. He didn't need to say he was war ready. And by the way, just quick point of order. I never love war references <laughs> when it comes to sports. Yeah. I, I try to avoid them at all costs yeah. because it's disrespectful to people actually, Dude, actually go to war. Right. OK, we get that. But in this case, it just it just came across as silly to me that you're war ready. We battle. How about we go into battle? battle. OK, you're you're battle ready. I'll give you battle ready. And I do believe LeBron and company should be the, pro, as I just told you a couple of segments back, prohibitive yeah. favorites, mm -hmm. prohibitive favorites to win. Not the Bucks, the Lakers. They have huge advantages, such as LeBron just got five months off after he made an MVP surge at the end of what was, it seems five months ago, it seems five years ago, mm -hmm. the regular season. Mm -hmm. I thought he surged into the league to win MVP because he did have the great Brady-esque narrative of in year 17, mm -hmm. he's had this bounce back year 
from a blooper reel that we kept showing a year ago. Maybe, maybe, no, we, maybe, you. maybe I fueled him then. I kept showing the blooper reel because it was legit. I didn't make it up. It wasn't CGI. Yeah, it was. It yeah. happened. You you picked bits it, and pieces. Bits and pieces? You picked bits and pieces you from like five. You throw the ball in at Phoenix and hit the back of the backboard. I don't think, are we showing it? There you go. Oh, yeah, we're yeah, showing yeah. it. <laughs> Kuzma had to throw him out there to, to guard I the three-point line I to push him out you. there. LeBron, Le LeBron, just pick it up. LeBron, you better pick it up. LeBron kicked it out of bounds. That's blooper material. LeBron, come on. You're better than that. Here we go again, LeBron. That's Mario Hazonia blocks your last shot at the garden. It, it, it growing. The hallowed garden. It's growing. It's, it's Mario Hazonia. It's he blocked his last it's shot. Growing. It was the last it's second growing. shot. He blocked it. It's growing with her. Mario Hazonia. You know what, Skip, okay. you, you know what? I was just thinking when you said uh, Jordan wouldn't probably be on social media. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because of the comment section. Mm -hmm. He couldn't handle that. Because yeah. the very guy that took it to light because uh well, who's the uh, the coach at Seattle? Who's that, Skip? George Carl. George Carl. Yeah. Wouldn't shake his hand at a restaurant. Mm. So everything was viewers like, can you imagine some 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 fan, somebody in Iowa, somebody in, 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 in Minnesota mm. saying something negative about Michael Jordan? He couldn't do it. It would have set him off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what? He might have been exactly. undefeated in exactly. the finals. With social media, he might have won every finals game he ever played in. Stop it. He would have read the comments before Stop. the game and said, oh, okay, it. I'll watch Stop it. it. Yeah. Oh, the guy that took a the guy that took a year and a half off because uh, the media was on it? Oh, uh, that's not why. Uh, he did. You know and I know why he took away. He was forced to take. Take they don't force nothing. Okay, so here we go again. This this man is all time great. Why does he have to keep telling us? Just go go do Brady it. Brady does it all the time. <sighs> Brady's went to nine Super Bowls and so, won six of them. Hey, okay, this is the unBrady. He's three and six in, which, in quote unquote Super Bowls, which means he shouldn't even be on social media. He shouldn't even have a social media page. Mm. He has not. He went to nine. He's won six. Why? But every time I turn around, he on there. Mm. I'm back. <laughs> and all this old, oh, see, there you go. Mm. See, you got a double standard with, with Tom mm. and, uh, and Goat James. Well, but, well, come on. I, every post is a king emoji, and I'm saying you're, you're the king of what? You, you know what? You're three and six in the finals. Is that kingly? King. Is it? Is it Crown it's it. not. Crown him what? You know what? I, I mean, seriously, what, what are you doing? It's, a revenge, it's, it's beneath your dignity to keep doing It's a doing revenge this. season. You, along with many others, wrote him off. Mm -hmm. Y'all still black, doing blasphemous things to mm -hmm. this man's name. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to talk about it. Kenny Smith, you talk about LeBron James. They do top 10 or you <laughs> barely 10. He's unathletic. He, he was yeah. like unathletic. And how that look? Leonard. And how you look now? How you like me now? Mm. You Kuzma know, the, this all, it, it has this faint odor of insecurity. Oh, I'm not yeah, sure. <laughs> it's either that or the flip side of that. It's the Cam Newton special, like we just talked about Cam. Is he trying to roar like the lion to intimidate everybody? Is that what he's doing? Alex, you smell that? No. I smell a championship coming to L.A. <laughs> yeah, I smell it. Somebody cooking it up right uh, as we speak. Uh, you know, if somebody has to tell you they're the king, they're not the king. That's what you That's do. That's the point. That's what you do, Skip. When they say the Maasai boy, when mm -hmm. he goes out to become a man, yep. he has to kill a lion. <laughs> yeah. He don't sneak up on the lion. No. He has to beat the drum. Let him know he coming. Yep. I'm telling you I'm coming. And ain't nothing you can do. Mm. Is that what he's doing? Yeah. Okay. That's the difference between a black mama and a, and a rattlesnake. Mm. See, a rattlesnake, mm -hmm. he warned you. Mm. Black mama run up on you. Dead. We telling you we're coming. <laughs> do what you're going to do. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. You know, I wish LeBron would just relax. I don't. Because he is the prohibitive. I know he's smelling he blood. He's smelling blood, and he should be smelling blood. But this, this is the easiest path he's ever had to any sort of final, any Wait Eastern that. Conference, Western Conference, or to the NBA Finals. The easiest path he's ever had. He just got five months to revitalize after I thought he pulled ahead in the MVP chase. Okay. Come Way to go. The Everything's okay. But you know what? There's one man out there who is not impressed and not intimidated by the roaring lion. There's one man who is scoffing, who is rolling his eyes, who is probably even chuckling over war ready. That man lives in the basement at Staples. That man, just about one year ago, on the 5th of July, 
jerked the rug <laughs> right out from underneath the guy upstairs in Staples who thought that that man was going to join him and make it a big three for the mighty Lakers. That man's name is Kawhi Leonard. And he said, basically, I don't want to play with him. I want to play against That's him. Okay. He is relishing this time. He did get also five months off to rest his arthritic knees. Mm -hmm. So I think he will be at the healthiest he can be as they go into the bubble. And I think it will be trouble for LeBron James, even though the Clippers have not played together much at all. Well, you bothered by what LeBron James posted. I'm bothered by what Kawhi said. Talk about he probably would have made it to the NFL, mm. but he just didn't like to practice football. Mm. Oh, you believe that too, don't you? Yeah, I, I believe that. And the, the all-time boss move happened on opening night of what was this regular <laughs> season. Kawhi Leonard dropped a New Balance commercial in the middle of a national TV <gasps> broadcast, Lakers versus Clippers. You know what? In it, he's <laughs> exiting in his classic car. And it says, no car. It, it's saying Kawhi Town. And swinging on his little keychain is a crown. He's saying, no, time out. I'm the king of L.A., or at least I'm the new king of Actually LA. not. Right? You see, LeBron just got a $40 million place in Beverly Hills. Mm. I told you we're coming close. Yeah! I did not see <laughs> I that. Know you didn't. See, I know you look didn't. At that. Don't worry about look it. Look at that swinging keychain. That ain't nothing. Huh? Crown. He got a crown. Is that not a shot? Is that not a throwdown challenge of I am here? Stop playing that, Azzy. You think I love you that. I love that. Can <laughs> we see that again? No, I don't need to see it no more. That's but what's okay. about to happen in Orlando. A new crown is going to be... Well, guess what? I hope he had that car shipped down to the bubble mm. because he needs some time to think. After we kick him out of the bubble, he can drive all the way back from Florida to reminisce as he's driving through, get on the 10. Because really? I believe it's the 10 that'll take you to where you need to go. Yep. So he can just pick up the 10 and head, come on back west. Okay. No mercy. Mario Chalmers was in Miami with LeBron for four seasons, but when the two-time champ was asked who was the best leader he'd ever played with, he took a brief pause and then went with his other Heat teammate, Dwayne Wade. So, Shannon, are you surprised that he chose Wade over LeBron? No, because he played with um, D-Wade two years before LeBron got there and then played with D-Wade two years after he left. So I don't, I'm, not, I'm not surprised that he said this. We got to get out of this notion because someone is the best player, that makes them the best leader. And I think we confuse those two sometimes, or we try to, try to make them exclusive. You have to be this and you have to be that. No, I don't have a problem with Mario Chalmers saying Dwayne Wade is the best leader that I've ever played with. I got no problem with that. Hmm. I have no problem with it because it's the truth. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Rio, as they called him, and as Alex pointed out, he hesitated a moment because he knew he was about to plunge into some deep water, and he said, Dwayne Wade, best leader I ever played with. Yeah. I said this from day one. Dwayne Wade was the best thing that ever happened to LeBron James. Their first go-round together in 2011 in the finals, LeBron suffered his most epic fail. And from that moment on, it felt to me like Dwayne just took him under his wing. He was the big brother to LeBron. He taught him how to be a pro at the highest level, how to win, how to calm himself, how to focus himself, how to rise to the biggest occasions. And... Dwayne has, to me, stronger intangibles than Le LeBron's more talented. He's bigger, he's stronger, fat, he's all those things. But listen, that intangible package inside Dwayne Wade, I I've never seen anything quite like it before because he was only about, what, what is six Dwayne, three. six, maybe, yeah, I was going to say 6'4", but yeah. you, you might be right. I give 6'3", right. now, six, okay. yeah, 6'4". Right. Skip, I think the greatest sign of Dwayne Wade's leadership was he said, LeBron, be you, I'll play off of you. He can see. No, he he took the Robin roll right out off the bat. He you know, gave I, up. I, he I, gave yeah. up Wade County temporarily, yeah. mm -hmm. so LeBron James can flourish. Mm -hmm. That is a sign of leadership. Very few people will be at the top and relinquish that voluntarily. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Give him credit for that. No power I, concedes nothing without demand. Mm -hmm. Well, Dwayne Wade was the power figure there. He was there. He had won a championship. Had a historic playoff a finals run. Skip. One of the great finals in NBA history. He shot a lot and, of free throws. And he said, you know what, LeBron? In order for us to be what we think we can be, mm -hmm. you need to be top dog. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to step back. I'll be Robin. Go be Batman. Mm -hmm. So that's great leadership. But I still say he was Batman in the locker room off the floor. Yeah. He was the Batman 
in, in leadership. We're not gonna let you try to bring your driver wedge between me, mm -hmm. D Wade, and LeBron. Well, that ain't gonna happen. Doing that. Yeah, you try to all oh, D Wade is the leader. We're talking about ancient history no. here. We still got history. We still fam. <laughs> we fam. Well, that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 9:30 Eastern. Stick around because the herd is coming up next.